does green mean? If you're from the flowing plains of the Southwest, it's North Texas. If it's Bourbon Street and Street Lamps, it's the French Quarter. If you're the nation's leading rusher, you're Patrick Cobbs of North Texas. A team in search of nine straight wins. If you're a Tiger, then roar about the success of quarterback Danny Wimprine and a Memphis team in its first bowl appearance in 32 years. The bowl season kicks off with two teams with contrasting styles. The New Orleans Bowl starts now. We got the greatest fans in the world, and they're proud of you. They're proud of what you've done. Make them proud again tonight. Make your university proud. Make your family, make your friends proud of you by the way you carry yourself and by the way you play. Offense, hold on to it. Defense, knock it loose. But most of all, have the best time. Soak it up, guys. Have the best time you've ever had playing football. And I mean it. Woo! You better have fun out there tonight or I'm going to be real mad in the offseason. <laughs> you had the best time you've ever had playing the game of football. In case you can't tell, Tommy West and the Memphis Tigers, and especially their fans, have waited 32 years, and they're letting it loose for this first appearance of the postseason since 1971. Memphis and three-time Sun Belt Conference champion North Texas tonight in the New Orleans Bowl. And we welcome you inside the Superdome of the Big Easy where we start and will finish the postseason here on January 4th. Welcome again, Dave Barnett, Bill Curry. Happy to be joined by Chris Steelman. 32 years since Memphis played in a bowl. That bowl doesn't even exist anymore, the Pasadena Bowl. North Texas knows all about long waits. They waited 42 years to get here two years ago. Now they're the old hands. They've been here three years in a row, and they made it this year on the backfill of the nation's leading rusher, Patrick Cobbs. His name is Patrick Cobbs, and he is the single biggest surprise that I have had in this bowl season. I must say it's a pleasant surprise. He is the real deal. He is indeed the leading rusher in the United States of America at 157 yards a game, and Chris, he averages 5.5 yards per carry. But there are weapons on the other side of the ball as well. Yeah, and that weapon right here is Danny Wimprine, a local kid from New Orleans, had to get over 100 tickets for this football game. The thing about Danny Wimprine is he'll set records. He can make every throw that needs to be made, the soft touch, the deep bomb. The one thing that might hurt him is, I, I never thought I would say this, he has a linebacker mentality which gets him in trouble in his decision-making process. If he struggles early, they might go to the bullpen early and call the left-hander Bobby Roberson. Just see, just to settle Danny down. Watching tonight, he has to get off to a good start for Memphis to be in this ballgame. Former Missouri Valley Conference rivals, they haven't played in 23 years. And when we come back, Heather Cox will talk about the road the Tigers took to New Orleans for the moment. From the streets outside the Superdome, downtown New Orleans, inside, where Memphis and North Texas are about to kick it off. And we're about to welcome the fourth member of our crew on the sidelines for us tonight, Heather Cox. Dave, thank you. The tale of the Memphis season can be defined by the highs and the lows of two games this season. The defining moment of success, an early season win over Ole Miss, one of the biggest games in school history. The low, a surprising loss in the regular season finale to South Florida. So tonight's bowl game gives Memphis a second chance, an opportunity to prove that the South Florida game was a fluke and that this is the same team that beat Ole Miss. They'll do that using North Texas as a mentor or an example of sorts. They want to be the North Texas of last year, the one that upset a highly ranked Cincinnati team and not the team of two years ago that had stars in its eyes and was just happy to be here. Memphis feels that 32 years is an awful long time to wait for a bowl and not come out and play its best football. Memphis, one of the most improved teams in the country this year, from three wins last year to eight and four this year. Nine and three North Texas can go for ten wins, just the third time in school history. Memphis has won the toss. They defer. And the mean green waiting for the opening kick. Kevin Moore is back deep. Patrick Byrne for the Tigers for the opening kick of the 2003 bowl season. And a nice deep one return by Ricardo Smith out to the 19. And from there, North Texas will go. 
with junior quarterback from Shirts, Texas, not too far from San Antonio, Scott Hall, who is simply used to winning 62 and 5 in junior high school, high school, and North Texas 8 0 starting this year. If he had enough attempts, he would be the sixth rated passer in the country, but North Texas is not about passing. They're about making sure that Patrick Cobbs gets it 25, 30, 35 times a game and eats the clock up, and that's where the contrast makes tonight so interesting because Memphis wants to strike as quickly as possible. Johnny Quinn went in motion, and not surprisingly, Cobbs on the first play from scrimmage maybe fights for a yard. As we look at the Mean Green starting offense, Keep your eye on Johnny Quinn, even though North Texas doesn't throw the ball. Johnny Quinn has 30 catches, but the amazing thing about it, it's over 20 yards a pop, so he does have big play potential. And on the offensive line, it's a group that really has very little in the way of experience, but they've cleared the way, he said, for the best running back in the country statistically and they protect Hall pretty well only 18 sacks allowed Hall to the air for the first time if he finds anybody open better idea to keep it and dive for the first down at the 30. Now the line for North Texas features only one senior and that is Nick Zuniga unanimous third time selection of the first team all Sun Belt Conference this year and his 48th start that is his school record. Defensive line Taylor co-leader six sacks Albert Means the nose tackle probably the best known player up front for the Tigers. Cobbs with a toss sweep and block well and Cobbs with a cutback and trips at midfield. It's 20, it was almost 70. Cobbs cannot believe it. A perfectly blocked toss sweep. Secondary out of position, not unusual in the Memphis gambling style. And what does the leading back in the nation do? He gets so excited that the little line monster grabs his toe. And you see right there, Zuniga gets a good hook block, cutting off the defense and lineman enough. And right there, Cobbs has great vision and burst. That's what makes him a great back is his vision and his burst. At 5'9", he plays like he's 6'4". So from midfield, Cobbs again on the carry. Squeezes out about seven yards. David McNair on the tackle. The linebackers go from Memphis line up this way. Will Hyden, former walk-on, leading tackler, 98 tackles on the year. He's the leader. He'll be all over the football field. And they play five DBs. More useful against more of a passing attack. But Ballard, Tommy West, says our best player. It's his 39th straight start. And you see just the three-man front. Eight, at least five yards off the line of scrimmage. So there's room to toss it out there. And the completion is to Quinn. Right at... The yardage marker for the first down, maybe a foot or so short. Hey, Dave, and one thing that North Texas is doing they have to establish in this football game is they have to win first downs. They can't afford to get in third long situations. They don't have that quick strike offense, so it's important for Cobb to get going early. Or you hit Johnny Quinn on a little read, read route and just get uh, put yourself in position to win. Solid yardage on first down. That's what they need. He's carried three times, a direct snap it to him, and no problem getting to the 35 of Memphis. And a little trickery from North Texas and Coach Darrell Dickey right off the bat. You see the quarterback walking over as if to call the play. Not a very good snap by Brewster, put a, put a darn good block. Looked like and a surprise, and they did catch Memphis unawares and made an easy first down rather than having to knock people back off the ball. Well, with all the movement that a Joe Lee done defense is known for, that can be an Achilles heel sometimes, can it? It can indeed. Option Hall, keeping. And a game of about four down to the 31-yard line where Will Hyden, leading tackler for the Tigers, 98 for the year coming in tonight. 
Yeah. Former walk on, big surprise. Well, you, and in the defending option, one thing you got to play assignment football and you got to pursue. That time Will Hyden coming from his middle linebacker does a good job. It's a speed option. Joe Lee Dunn does not like to play against the option because it's assignment football. He better have his guys play with the philosophy, see ball, get ball. Don't worry about all these assignments. Go ahead and get the football. When you run that option in there, it puts a headache in his brain. Will Lee Dunn, uh, most recently from Mississippi State. With a committee and Cobbs hit as soon as the ball arrives, falls forward. One of the best things he does always yep. seems to fall forward at least for a yard or two. He reaches the 30. Watch 44, Derek Pollard coming off the edge. There he is. He came in this direction. No blocker for him. And that's what Joe Lee's answer is for this fierce running game. Coach Dunn's going to bring him off the edges and force North Texas to deal with that extra tackle. And that brings that fifth and sixth man up on the line of scrimmage, even though it's a 3-3-5. Three, three, you can still line up six or seven guys on the line of scrimmage like regular conventional defense. So Hall in the shotgun to timeout. We'll talk over third and five. Formation mistake. Opening drive of the game, promising so far for North Texas, but they need to pick up five from the Memphis 30 when we come back. Well, North Texas is actually the first team in the country to secure a bowl bid. Over a month ago, winning the Sun Belt for the third straight year. 18 straight conference victories. That is the nation's longest win streak in any league and for the second year in a row nose tackle Brandon Kennedy named the Sun Belt player of the year even over Patrick Cobbs which may surprise some but Kennedy uh, coming into this year a little more established he has been uh, a mainstay for four years in the middle of the North Texas defensive line third and five now after the timeout and all not going from the gun after the discussion they keep it on the ground, and Cobbs bottled up at the line. And chased down by the Memphis nose tackle, Albert Means. In order to be a good defensive lineman, you've got to be able to engage the block and disengage the block, and Albert Means is a big boy. He's in there punching about 320, and I like his pursuit. Anybody that can chase a toss sweep down from nose guard position, He's going to be a solid player for you. Right there, Albert Means showed me what it was to play a nose guard by defeating the block and making the tackle. North Texas will try 47-yarder. Nick Basil Dua's longest ever, 49. That was earlier this year. Quinn is the holder. And plenty of leg. And good. Basil Dua won the season finale at the gun at New Mexico State on ESPN2. That was just a 24-yarder. This one almost twice as long in the mean green half the early league. He smoked it, too. I mean, that was good by a long one. Yeah, I'll tell you what, we just saw a good indication that what Chris Spielman told us early in the game was absolutely true. North Texas was able to do well on first down coming down the field, but when they ended up with third and six, they didn't have a play. They didn't want to take a chance on throwing it down the field, Chris, and they ended up running a toss sweep and having to settle for the field goal. Memphis 8-4, 5-3 in Conference USA. The Pasadena Bowl of 71, last time they played this late in the season. They are missing a major cog tonight. D'Angelo Williams, Conference USA Player of the Year, running back who picked up over 1,400 yards, a Tiger single season record, but tore his left MCL against Cincinnati November 22nd. They thought maybe he could go. They worked him some in practice this week, but when it was sore after working last Saturday, doctors scratched him. He is not in uniform tonight, and that obviously is a major loss. It would be as if North Texas had to go without Patrick Tom. Dave, I saw him play in a regular season. He's the real deal now. He's a difference maker. This will be Chris Kelly. And Kelly turns in a nice return, and Memphis will take over at their 35-yard line. Knocked down by Taylor Casey. So Danny Wimprine from 
River Ridge, Louisiana, born right here in New Orleans. Chris said 100 friends and family are here. He's used to playing in the Dome. High school and earlier this year against Tulane, all told he is 7-2 playing inside the Superdome. And not just a thrower. He has three rushing touchdowns. He's had his problems late in the season. And again, in the first place to Darren White. Brings the defense out, and they have him for a loss of a couple of yards. And the rest of the Memphis offense. Maurice Avery tore his MCL November 15th in a game against Louisville, and he's back tonight. He's out there with a brace. I watched him in warm-ups, and he really struggled to run. So he was expected to start. I do not see him on the field, but we should see him at some point tonight. Maurice Avery, a quarterback who moved to wide out in the spring. Also a running threat. He scored three touchdowns on the ground. A top receiver. And the man who replaces Williams tonight, Darren Parquet, brought down by the defensive tackle, Evan Cardwell. The offensive line for Memphis, not real big. Only one 300-pounder starts. That's Jason Matthews. They have four juniors. Most of these guys back, in fact, they'll all be back, and they, as a group, allowed only 11 sacks, and as much as they pass, that's impressive. North Texas up front defensively, Kennedy, as we said, two times Sunbelt Player of the Year. He's able to do a lot of things from his no guard position, including getting pressure on the passer. Went prime deep on third and 13. Inside the 10, down to the five, is Darren Garcia. Who beat Jeremy Pearl for 63 yards. Well, one way to get your confidence in your quarterback is go ahead and let him air it out. And if you're third and 13 as a defensive back, you've got to understand that they're going to go for the sticks. You give the underneath route, come up and make the tackle. And they're going to cover three zone. That means your deepest the deepest. You don't let anybody get behind you. He got caught in his back pedal too long. The receiver climbed up top of him. And Jeremy Pearl's late. But he does a good job of hustling and saving the touchdown. But he was late getting out of his back pedal. Thus the big play. Mike and down at the six for their first and goal, Memphis. And White carries off tackle and tripped up after a gain of just one. The linebacker four with Hurd, Sunbelt Defensive Player of the Year. The lot, Kennedy's overall player of the year. And in the secondary, Buckles and Jones, both first team, all Sunbelt this year. Big hitters, linebacker life. At the two safeties. Second and goal from the five. And Parquet makes it down to the three with the flag thrown where you might look for holding. And you sure don't like to see that if you're the offensive unit. Brandon Kennedy assisting the officials expertly, nodding his head, signaling holding, which he will do frequently, I'm sure. Nose guards love to do that. And I guess they get held every now and then, Chris. Well, you should know now. You, have well, you ask him. Day. You <laughs> ask him. How, what, what percentage? There's some keys to the game if you want to take a look at for, for Memphis. Is they got to they make offense. Ten yards from the previous spot remains second down. Scott Hall has to beat them for him. We have the number one rusher in the country. You've got to try to eliminate him. I don't want to hear anything about slowing him down. You eliminate his rear end from the game. You make the quarterback beat you. And you need solid play from Danny Wimpine. Right now he starts fast, which could be a dangerous sign for North Texas. All right, Reddit Kennedy told us he's held 75% of the time. Option pitch by Kent. At the seven-yard line, upended by Craig Jones, his second straight emphatic tackle. Yeah, and you could say that about these safeties. Craig Jones and Jonas Buckles during warm-ups. Darrell Dickey was telling us when he goes on the field, people say, are those your safeties? They don't look like safeties. Yeah, the They're both a little under six feet. They look like 215-pound linebackers, and that's how they hit. Boom, right there. Yeah, I'm not going to let him get away with it, though. He better keep his head up and wrap his arms because a good back will make you miss eventually if he doesn't wrap his arms, coach. Five wide, third and goal from the seven. Quarterback draw, win prime, touchdown. Beautiful execution and a comeback from a 10-yard penalty. Holding. Nice execution on the option. 
Chris pointed out the head down tackle that gave him a couple of extra yards. Now they spread the field. And we'll see what Wimprine sees. And this is what you like when you've got a quarterback draw call. Nobody in a green shirt. They all drop. Extra point by Steven Guskowski to make it 7-3 Tigers. The fourth rushing touchdown of the year for Danny Wimpride as they spread out the defense and set him on the quarterback draw right through the middle. ESPN2's exclusive presentation of the 2003 New Orleans Bowl. Brought to you by New Orleans. Discover all that New Orleans has to offer at neworleansonline.com. New Orleans, happening every day. And by Amstel Light, the beer drinker's light beer. Memphis takes in sixth place, 66 yard. Well, congratulations. And Danny Wimprine on the quarterback draw makes it 7-3 to three Tigers. Do you think he has any idea what he's in for? None. That guy? It'll be wonderful, son. Yeah. <laughs> well, my wife's listening. Patrick Byrne kicks this one way deep and Kevin Moore. Ricardo Smith finally falls on it for the touchback. All right, take a look now. We're going to go to football 101 right here. When you have a great nose guard, you give him a lot of freedom. Right here, Brendan Kenny takes too much freedom. He's going to jump two gaps. His responsibility has got to be in the A gap. He jumped all the way to the B gap, thus opening up and creating a huge hole, Coach. That's right. And when he does that, there should be a compensation, and somebody should be filling here or from here. And there was a missed assignment both by the nose and by a linebacker, and that made it way too easy for Memphis to walk in. Yeah. Cody Spencer dropped out for pass because he read the pass on his quarterback draw, not having time to get back to cover his responsibility on run. Texas, second possession. And Cobbs finds a crowd waiting for him at the line of scrimmage. Send it down to Heather. Dave, bad news for a very weak running back position already for Memphis. Darren Parquet suffered a stinger on that last possession. They are testing him right now. They don't know yet whether or not they'll go back in. During that timeout, the entire group of running backs came over to convince him that he was okay. Of course, led by D'Angelo Williams, who's out with that knee injury, guys. Is that going to work? Yeah, it's a pinched nerve. Nothing works unless it, the doctor clears him to go back in. He has to have strength in his shoulder. 7 to 10 with North Texas holds to a wide, wide open, underthrown Andy Blunt. He turned, the ball was five yards behind him. Now they get away too here, guys, with a pick play. Right here, Johnny Quinn will knock off the coverage. It's man coverage, and they're going to bring Blunt out on an out and up, and Johnny Quinn's going to come in your picture. He'll knock off the coverage, leaving Blunt wide open. Blunt doesn't see the football and doesn't make an adjustment on it. If he catches it, he's off into the paint. He's not in the paint. Here you go. Take a look. Watch Johnny Quinn will come into your picture right here. He's going to take away the coverage right there. He's going to pick. Man, that's a beautiful play, and Blunt's got to be aware of the football. Now, he's a freshman. He might be excited in his first bowl game. He wanted to get to the paint. He couldn't make the adjustment on the football. Junior misses. Green going to Cooney will be short of the first down of the 28-yard line. First possession, Hobbs trips on what looked like a 70-yard touchdown run at midfield. They settled for three, second possession, Blunt 20 yards behind the nearest defender, can't find the ball, and North Texas will have to punt. Now, tremendous advantage for North Texas if numbers hold based on season performance. The net punting for North Texas is 38.8 as opposed to a little over 32 for Memphis. Much stronger in special teams generally. And Kevlar. Wishing Cole Hoppy to go for the fair catch of the 37. Now let me just complete that thought. What that means is over half a first down on every punt exchange if these two teams remain true to form in the kicking game. So the Tigers with a 7-3 lead without their top rusher, Conference USA Player of the Year, who will have a chat with Heather when we come back to New Orleans.
Memphis 7, North Texas 3. The Tigers get a 63-yard pass to Darren Garcia, their first possession, to uh, set up the touchdown run on the quarterback draw by Danny Wimprine. North Texas has had two near-miss golden touchdown chances. Reduced only three points at a putt so far. The Tigers take over at their 37. You know, Parquet's back in there. Let's see if that shoulder's bothered. See if he starts running on eggs. Or is he going to be hitting it up in there with a purpose? A drive right away. And he'll get just a couple. Brought down by Evan Cardwell. He didn't look bashful to me. And we'll send it down to Heather. I am joined by Conference USA Player of the Year, D'Angelo Williams. I know how hard this is for you to be sitting out. Torn MCL. How is the knee? When do you think you'll get back to action? Well, I'm not quite sure when I'll be back, but uh, I was kind of disappointed that I wasn't able to play in this game because I was really pushing to play in this game, and it kind of hurt me a little bit. But Dan Parkett come for me, and uh, he said he's going to talk to me, and hopefully we can come up with a W. I know the hardest thing to do when you're used to playing is to be on the sideline, but what kind of advice were you able to give Darren and the other running backs, and how can you help your team on the sideline? Well, Darren was a little nervous coming out uh, because it's such a big game and uh, he's nervous he's starting uh, and I was telling giving him some pointers on how to hold the ball and things like that but um, I'm, I'm pretty confident that he's going to get the job done uh, we had a prayer before we came out we uh, talked um, amongst one another I mean it was strictly confidential and uh, hopefully he get it done all right congratulations on an incredible season we wish you a quick recovery thank you yeah they're not just missing his running but he is their second leading receiver who showed you he is the nation's leader 192 all-purpose yards per game 50 22. Lakendis Cole on the first down at the 49 yard line as he carries for the second straight time and brought down by Cody Spencer. Yeah, we talked to Randy Fiegner the offensive coordinator and when Danny Whipryan gets in trouble it's when he starts trying to make things happen. Right there they had a third and eight they go with the swing pass and Danny told me yesterday it's his job to get the ball into playmakers hands and right there he got into a playmaker hand. Give him the ball let him run and do some damage. Excellent read by Danny. They get the first down to keep the drive alive. And so far so good on the ball handling. Parquet and Cole have had problems hanging on to the football. Both of them have been turnover prone. Parquet fumbled twice in their last game against USF. And Prime getting complete. Ryan Scott with his 15th catch of the year. Well, Thursday night, the bowl season continues here on ESPN2. Ben Roethlisberger, if you haven't seen him, check him out. He's led Miami of Ohio to the MAC Championship. Now the Red Hawks meet the Louisville Cardinals in the GMAC Bowl. That's Thursday at 7.30 Eastern from Mobile. Here on ESPN2. Wow, he's a boy dog warrior now, I'm telling you. He can play. Going of eight on the catch by Scott. Second down and two. And Cole brought down a yard shot of the mark. Conference USA in the uh, postseason with Memphis here, Louisville in a couple of nights. And then what a matchup for the first ever Plains Capital Fort Worth Bowl. Number 19 TCU, number 16 Boise State, one loss each. Sharon Hawaii Bowl will be there for Houston, Hawaii. Axe of Liberty Bowl will be there for Southern Miss, Utah. You and I saw Boise there for real. For real. Third and one. Look for the pass from White, and he can't air it out this time too much. Overthrows Mario Pratchett. Now, Chris, a boy dog warrior. Let's let's define our terms because I, I'm I'm too much older than you to, to, to uh, get a handle on a boy dog warrior. How, how do I get to be one of those? You were one, coach. Oh, okay. You were one. Anybody oh, that plays you. hard loves thank football. You. And again, Darren White, we were told was going to throw a pass before the game. They tried to hit it, but North Texas was solid in that. And a boy dog warrior like Darren White could throw the ball. <laughs> Going for it on fourth and one. Nope. Wim Prime, who tries the quick kick, gets too much on this one. And he did it left footed. He's, what did you say? How do you say ambidextrous when it's a left footed and right handed? He can kick left footed <laughs> or right footed. <laughs> So still 7-3 Tigers. Now late first quarter in the Superdome. <laughs> Boy, they just go together, don't they? The streetcars and downtown New Orleans. That's the first one I've seen. I mean, they need to bring them all back. Yeah. This needs to be San Francisco side. It used to be. I think it is. You see that hat on that guy? What are you implying? 
San Francisco South. <laughs> How hard is that? Well, Texas after the quick kick by Wimpron. All rolling. Rolling deep. And went into double coverage for Joel in Wigway. He had Johnny Quinn wide open if he had swung that pass about 10 yards to the left. And whenever you try to get a team to loosen up their defense, you go ahead and wing it downfield. Scotty had a little tough read right here. He's going to be, the ball's going to be thrown into double coverage right at that point. And there's Johnny Quinn, as Dave pointed out, wide open. But the safeties do a good job of breaking down the quarterback's eyes, reading the arm angle, and going up to the highest point to take it down. You can already tell when North Texas passes, they don't mess around with the dinks and the dunks. They go deep. Again, a crowd waiting for Cobbs. And the last couple of series, that's what we've seen. Derek Baller, the senior cat safety. They call their best player up for this side. This is what you can expect to see from a Joe Lee Dunn defense. Here comes Ballard. He's coming. He lines up about three or four yards deep, but his responsibility is the D gap, the outside gap, and he is not going to let you make that corner, and there's no blocker for him. They tried to block him. He got yeah, lower than the blocker. No blocker yeah. that got there. Cobbs, 34 yards, his first four carries, his last four, zero. And forced to throw, needing 12 overthrown. This time, Jamel Branch was wide open. And Chris, Memphis successfully right now, making Scott Hall beat him. And he's not been able to do That's that. in the game plan, Dave, and you take away Cobbs, and it's a, it's tough hauling for, for North Texas. They're not used to throwing the ball because he had Branch on a skinny post right where he wanted him. He's got to throw the strike. He sailed one. At least three wide open targets. Yeah. I haven't been able to hit many. And uh, just two of five for 10 yards. Hoppy back deep. This punt by Cad Dubar, fair caught at the 47. Thursday night, ESPN has the exclusive announcement of the 2004 NFL Pro Bowl starters on a special edition of NFL Live at 7 Eastern. The NFL Live Pro Bowl Selection Show presented by Sears on ESPN. How many Pro Bowls combined do we have uh, here in this booth? I don't know, but I got a funny feeling it's going to be like a Mike Golick, Reggie White sack total. What's that? He said, well, we had 220 between us. And I said, <laughs> how many did Reggie have? He said, well, 209. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know how. I, uh, I was in two. How many you? I was in four, Coach. You were in four. So, so that's we counting had me, six between Counting us. me, that's six. That's <laughs> <laughs> six between the three of us. So Mike took all those double teams for Reggie. That's, that's what he, that's what what he said. Shotgun. When Prime barely able to handle the little slap and will lose a couple of yards. And... Very lucky he didn't lose the ball entirely. He and Frederick had the very same problems in warm-ups. A low snap, and a lot of set, a lot of quarterbacks just gobble those up, but Winprine does not. He does not easily handle a poor snap. That was not only low, but it was off to the left. And all I can say about gun snaps is that I'm glad I played before the days of the gun. Because that's really tough for a center to be 100%. What about consistent. that single wing snap? Did you play in those days? <laughs> no, I missed that too. All right. Second and 12, shotgun draw with Candace Cole, and he gets past the first wall, and about four yards. Out near midfield, all the way to the secondary, the free safety, Jonas Buckles makes the tackle. Anytime North Texas plays run defense, so they're going to bring pressure, they're going to do it off the zone, they're not comfortable throwing it out of man. That time, Chris Hurd came wide open, and Cole did a good job of just getting what he got, because Hurd had a shot of him in the sights, and the backfield left his feet and didn't right. get it. That's right, broke a tackle. North Texas defense, 17th in the country against the run. And he played in Oklahoma, Arkansas, Air Force, in addition to the Sun Belt. Wimprine, well protected, gunning deep, man open off the hand of Garcia, and here comes a late flag. Jeremy Pearl twice having his problems trying to keep up with Garcia. Got a 63-yarder on the first Memphis possession to set up their score. Now, as Chris said, North Texas is going to try to stay in zone, but when you are even Steven with a receiver, somebody eventually has to play man, and Pearl has to play the man and the football here, and you can't grab him by the back of his head and turn his head with the right hand. 
for, yeah, he's a take. without getting called. That's what the call is for. The left hand is fine. And his body position too, coach. He's got to be on the inside part of that receiver because the safety only one safety deep. He's got to be on the inside, to make the sideline his friend. And that time he let the uh, 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 that, that receiver Garcia inside wasn't in great position to make a play on the ball. North Texas will rack up some penalty yards. Cross will be in business. They say swing pass to right. And a nice move at the 30 and dives ahead for another couple of yards. Well, they average 89 yards in penalties a game, and that's far too much. But they did not seem concerned, Dave, as you pointed out. They are aggressive, and they say they play in a league that is not particularly aggressive, and the officials are going to call them a lot. They'll handle those aggressive fouls. They don't like the five yarders and stop drive. Well, they say they coach them to go to the whistle, and a lot of times a hit will happen before they hear a whistle, and they'll be called for a late hit. Hadn't happened yet. See Danny Wimpine getting a play from the sidelines. There's the coaches are reading the defense and aren't obliged to call for him. Play clock is not running. So referee uh, recognizing that. This is a Big East officiating crew tonight. Also the end of the quarter. So 15 minutes done in the Superdome and Tommy West, Memphis Tigers with a 7-3 lead in the New Orleans Bowl. Well, like we said, when you've waited 32 years to get to a bowl. <laughs> I mean, that is blue. That's not the group. That's just blue. As blue as the group. And we start the second quarter with a second and two for Memphis, leading 7-3. Dave Barnett, Bill Curry, Chris Fieldman, and Heather Cox. There ought to be some little green men running around here then. Like you, Dave. They probably are. Toss, sweep, cold. Knocked down, but not until he gets the first down of the 25-yard line. Hit there by Markeith Knowlton. You may see more of Knowlton now that Jeremy Pearl has been uh, burned by Garcia a couple of times. Or he has been to game track. After hitting Garcia for 63 yards, one prime. On the quarterback draws, fourth score of the season. Cobbs, 34, and 20 of that almost turned into 70, but he tripped at midfield, and North Texas on their first possession had to settle for three. Sure enough, I knew they'd be here. That's <laughs> the Barnett family. They're here. 25-yard line, Tigers. And whistles before they can get on track. I guess there may be viewers that don't know this, but Dave Barnett is a graduate of North Texas. Get ball, full start, offense. Well, Five yards, remains first down. The interest of full disclosure, very well. It's out there. And Heather will have more on that later. He's treated uh, Dave sang the alma mater for me when the band was playing before the game, which was a nice touch. It was moving. If yeah. you don't behave, I'll do it again. <laughs> we'll behave. <laughs> Daryl Dickey, a couple of years ago, was literally down to his last week. He had lost the first game of the 2001 Sun Belt season. And had he lost against Middle Tennessee State, there might not have been another game. Cole on the carry. But he said, he told his team, look, everybody is against us. We had 100 players, we had 10 coaches, and that's it. You guys don't worry about me. Play for yourselves. Said so they had the best week of practice in his coaching career, and they upset Middle Tennessee State and have not lost a conference game since. 18 straight, third straight Sun Belt win. It's one of the amazing stories leaping out of a, a coaching it graveyard. And it, it's, it's what you can do with a great positive attitude and stick into your business. So he recruited character first, and character helped work Texas out of that ditch. A middle screen look, and Kennedy dropping back in pass coverage to uh, make the stop on the tight end, John Doucette. Well, he really didn't drop back into pass coverage, Dave. He just didn't have any pass rush. When he gets tired, this is what he does, but he can be a factor. Watch him right here. He's going he's gonna to take the snap and watch him come off the ball. Here he comes. He's not really pass rushing. He's kind of reading the quarterback, and he's able to play the check down receiver, and he moves very well for a big fella at 320. He can break on the football and give you that type of effort and take away the check down. But don't forget, you're going to have time to throw the ball because he's not pass rushing. Timeout, Tigers. They discuss a third and six early in the second quarter, trying to add to a 7-3 to three lead. Easy. Third 
third and six now for the Tigers. Line to gain 15 of North Texas. They've had a timeout to discuss it. Darren Parkett with a bruised shoulder will be evaluated at the half, and so Lakendis Cole continues to be the running back with Wim Prime. Keeping out of the shotgun and tripped up before he can get going. Michael Pruitt, junior out of El Reno, Oklahoma, saves the third down for the North Texas defense. This is a play that the quarterback's got to make. Wim Prime's got to be able to outrun a five technique and a three-man line, and he doesn't do it this time. Pruitt, who doesn't match him athletically or speed-wise, runs him down and gets a hold of that ankle. Steven Guskowski now on the 41-yarder, and off the right, upright, and no good. In the warm-ups, Guskowski struggled hooking the ball to his left from the right hash mark obviously overcompensated probably thinking about his warm-up so he's i got to start this well to the right and he started at about six inches too far a big stop for north texas defense Steven Guskowski on a baseball scholarship. Heather has some more on him. Well, what makes it so unique is that he's a kicker and a pitcher, a very rare combo, and also the fact that both of his coaches were dual sport athletes, so they get it. Tommy West was a tight end and an outfielder in the mid-70s at Tennessee, and his baseball coach, Dave Anderson, was signed by the Tigers to play quarterback, but then played professional baseball, so they truly understand the demands on Steven's time. One of the better runs uh, the last three series for Cobbs. Kostakowski benefits from the fact that Tommy West was a second round pick by the Cubs out of high school. Not, not every coach, Bill, uh, is as open-minded as Tommy West is for a guy who needs to split himself. Well, he, he can afford to do that, Dave, with a kicker. Now, what's he going to do in spring ball? You know, the only thing he's going to hit during spring practice is the showers. <laughs> you can work it out. This is Jamel Branch on the wideout. We'll have a first down for the Bean Green at the 35. Tackled there by Eric Taylor. So Branch helping out Cobb's cause in the running game. 39 yards on nine carries for Cobb's. And Branch, who rushed to 15 times through the regular season, gets the first down for the Bean Green. the Cobbs and had a little room there but tripped up at the line of scrimmage. Let's again uh, check in down below with him. Well I'm now joined by Ron Maestri, the executive director of the New Orleans Bowl and Ron congratulations in just the third year tremendous success and tremendous growth for the New Orleans Bowl. Well we're real proud of this game. Uh, this is two great schools and uh, the crowd that they have brought uh, the show to progress that we've made in three years uh, is very exciting. You know I talked to a lot of the players yesterday they all said this is their Sugar Bowl the only game in town but publicly how are you able to use the synergy created by the Sugar Bowl being in the same city? Well the kids think it's a national championship you can't tell them any different but uh, we're proud of the Sugar Bowl we've got a national championship game here before Christmas we've got all these fans in great economic impact we're just thrilled to be a part of this uh, to compliment uh, the Sugar Bowl compliments us so these kids are playing for their national championship and I know they're proud of it. Ron, thanks so much. Continued success to you. Thank you, Heather. Well, about as razzle-dazzle as you'll see North Texas go on the reverse. Branch took over the 38 and now third down and seven. And this is where they have bogged down on passing down. They don't even try to go to the air this time and Cobbs barely past the line of scrimmage. So you got a little bit of concern now if you're a North Texas fan because you're resulting and you're going to trick plays to try to get something going on in the ground. You wanted to get Cobbs on third and seven. Memphis understands what North Texas is going to do. They're taking Cobbs out of the game, just like Joe Lee told us they're going to make Scott Hall beat them. But when you go to trickeration, as Reese Davis likes to say, it's not going to work very often. Too well coached a football team on the defensive side for the Tigers. Brad Cadlebar 
Second team all Sunbelt for the second time this year. Kicking the hopping. Another fair catch, this one up to 24. And a 37-yarder. 9.16 to go. Second quarter. Memphis 7. North Texas 2003. New Orleans 4. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of the 2003 New Orleans Bowl. Brought to you by Capital One. What's in your wallet? And by the most respected, honored, and heroic 4x4s out there. Only in a Jeep 4x4. First game of the bowl season. The New Orleans Bowl in the Superdome. 7-3 Memphis. 16 in the second quarter with Bill Curry, Chris Steele, and Dave Barnett. Field position we knew would be important coming in. We thought it might favor North Texas. North Texas is a field position ball security football team. We'll come back after this play and finish this point. Wim Prime, six for six. Darren White with the catch at a gain of six. Okay. Their average starting field position so far in this game is the 21 yard line, Chris whereas Memphis has been starting on the average of the 36-yard line several times around midfield. North Texas is lucky that Memphis is not farther ahead. Yeah, on the North Texas side, Dave, we talked about, and Coach, that they have to be successful on first down if they want to win this football game. They wore in the first series, the last four series, they had the football one yard on first down. That's going to be a tough haul for them if they want to get it going. They'll have a third and short coming. After the carry by Lakendis Cole doing most of the running with Darren Parquet sitting out with a bruised shoulder. And again, they'll check him at the half and decide at that point whether he'll be able to go in the second half. Already without league's leading rusher, D'Angelo Williams with a left MCL injury. Win prime perfect so far. Cole upended at the 40. Take the reverse to White. It was Craig Jones who got him after a first down game. You're starting to see now North Texas defense is dragging a little bit because of the no huddle offense by Memphis. Memphis is setting the tempo for him right there. You see Parquet with the ice bag on the shoulder. He wants to be a part of it. Sproul says, give me the ball. It's my shot now. Yeah, and they're slow getting lined up, Chris. You're absolutely right. Just a little dragon on the green shirt. And Brian rolling in caught by Maurice Avery. And they hook up for the first time for 10 yards. Avery coming off basically the same injury that Williams had. He missed the final two games of the regular season. Their leading receiver, 46 on the year. Marquette. Forced to watch, but they're doing all right without him. They're midfield, another first down. Well, it's remarkable that he's out there. You can play with a torn MCL, obviously, and he had an extra week over Williams to get his ready. Well, one by one, Titans getting all the available weapons into the act. Cole, this time, drops for a loss of four. Tracked down by Cody Spencer and Marquise Milton. Darren Parquet was going to have a big night tonight. In order for him to do that, he had to stay healthy. Take a look at how he hurt his shoulder. So right here in the top sweep, you see Jones come up and gives him a shot with his helmet right on the top of the shoulder. And when people think those shoulder pads will, will protect you all the time, all the time they don't, because if you get one direct on there, oftentimes it'll go right through the pad like a spike. Personal fouls, offense, and defense. Second down. Brandon Kennedy that time got into a little pushing and shoving contest with Avery. And if I were Avery, I, I, I think I'd walk away from that 300-pound dude. And offsetting penalties. Good job by the officials to keep this thing in control. A well-played game. No turnovers so far and not many penalties. The big Avery go ahead. He yeah, took a shot. Yeah, you got to take your shots. I want a shot at the title, big man. Not a hundred pound advantage there on Avery. Brought by Cole. And another late flag. Cole back to the original line of scrimmage midfield. And see, they, they made the big fella a little angry right there, and the big fella decided to penetrate, and the only way to stop that penetration was the holding. 
<laughs> Gene Frederick. Take a look. If you're an offensive center, especially, but if you're a guard either, this is a nightmare. The guy's about four feet tall. He weighs a thousand pounds, and he hits the gap like he's shot out of a cannon. Now that was that was really a pretty darn good block, and I'm not sure where the holding was. Well, you see that his, his shoulder pad was cocked up by his ear, Coach. That's, <laughs> that was, that's a pretty good indication that that see, was. That was the open hand up underneath the pad. That's not oh, okay. legal in today's okay. football. Here. All right, I got you. That wasn't allowed when you and I were playing. <laughs> Well, there goes his shoulder up, yeah. cock, and, and he did have a hold of the cloth. That's legal, inside. though. His, his hands were inside. Yeah, they were inside. Winfrey almost slips. A heave on second and 24 starts to wobble. They still get the ball down to Cratcher inside the 15. 51 yards. It was a duck with a prayer. But Cratcher made it count. A heck of a job by the, the big receiver to come down with the football and Walter Priestley victimized. And this, this happens so many times. And you see the, the, the back is not fooled. It was a little, little hitch and go. It, it, we're in perfect position right now, both of us. Wide receiver, DB. Wide receiver stops. DB keeps running. Long gainer. As he tries to cut back, Joe gets about four down to the ten, and Kennedy sitting this series out. You know the, the difference is, is you got to be able to make an adjustment on the ball. Cratcher made the adjustment on the ball. Priestley did not make the adjustment on the football. This is a uh, almost brand new surface Astro play just installed last month, right in the middle of the New Orleans Saints season. And we've seen a lot of slippage. Not that that should be an excuse for, for either. It's a state-of-the-art surface. And from the 10, first man through Cole. And bottled up. Now, this is kind of interesting. If we could take a look at this formation. I just want to show the formation. This is a bone. This is a bonafide wishbone. Full house, three across backfield, and we're running old-school football plays out of it. They have a little cross buck they tried at the other end. Now look at that. That's just plain old wishbone football. Now the backs are not up in the three-point stances or four-point stances as you so often see. But a little misdirection and hand it to the fullback. A lot of stuff in the Memphis offense. Back to the gun. Third down roll win crime. To the end zone. Caught. Touchdown. Chris Kelly. And win crime is 10 for 10. And has now scored a touchdown and thrown for a touchdown. Well, he must have heard Coach Spielman. Yeah, well, what they're doing, Coach and Dave, is that they, they found Jeremy Pearl. And if you're a corner, you better have a, a short memory. And Jeremy right now has been frustrated. And they get Danny Wimprime out on the perimeter. They have no contain, nobody forcing the throw. He gets his shoulders turned and makes a good athletic move. Kelly runs a great route, takes it into the corner, pushes out. Easy catch. Pitch and catch for Danny. Guskowski, PAT 14-3 Memphis. Kelly, a transfer from Northeast Mississippi Community College. Where Brian right between the one and the two. There's Coach Feigner talking to his quarterback, Danny Wimprine, and he's, he's talking a lot of good things now. He's 10 for 10, 162. When Danny gets crazy and makes some bad decisions, you know what he does? He hangs up on him. But this is a long conversation. This is going to be a, 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 a high bill. They've been talking all the time. When he's when Danny's not performing well, Coach Feigner will just hang the phone up and say, hey, you're crazy, and bam, shut oh, yeah. it down. Well, there's a lot of love right now. Oh, yeah. 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 Every, yeah. 10 oh, yeah. 10, everybody's That's good. Fun. Everybody's good. Let's talk about some more plays. But what is there to say other than a good job? I wouldn't say anything. I wouldn't even talk to him. And what you say is don't screw it up. He's having a he's having a career day. In front of a hundred friends and family, the native of New Orleans. Responsible for the 14-3 Tiger lead. And again, nothing. Well, they're gonna bring this out. It's almost never a good idea. And the ball loose inside the 10. And recovered by Memphis. In this case, a disastrous idea. Daring special teams play by North Texas is not unusual. 
but this result certainly is, and it's the first turnover of the game. He brought this from seven yards deep in the end zone. When you do that, you need to get it past the 20-yard line so you can go back to the bench and face your coaches. O.C. Collins on the hit, and it was a big hit. And Cato Mott on the recovery of the fumble by Kevin Moore. So you got an eight-yard field, and you're already at 14-3. And your quarterback is literally perfect. First field by Avery, and that will net him a loss of a couple. Avery, a very dangerous running threat as well. 22 carries and three touchdowns during the regular year. Well, this field position is where Memphis likes to, to, to use their misdirection and their little weird plays. North Texas obviously knew that, and they had people up the field and in position to guard the backside. Well, turnovers are a major part of every football game, and the main reason for North Texas is plus 10 on a year. Memphis at 8-4 and four with minus 4 in a year. But they're winning the battle tonight. If they do that, they're going to be in shape. Quarterback draws already worked once for a touchdown. Gets it down near the 3. And it'll be third and goal from there. The one way a quarterback draw can work, and if you break through the initial surge, is you have receivers block downfield. Now I want you to watch a guy that's hungry because he hasn't played in a while is Avery. He's going to come in here and see right here. Look at him. He gets his hands inside. He's pushing Jones. Jones isn't getting rid of the block. There's Avery, a receiver blocking downfield. That's a beautiful sight to see. I had a great coach, Marv Levy, Hall of Fame coach, started every meeting with receivers need to block downfield to make big plays happen. And that's where Maurice did a great job of getting downfield. Put a helmet on somebody. It's good to see a receiver put a helmet He's pretty, I hope, I'm glad he's not looking for that cell phone under the goalpost that Joe Horn left under there. No, I already left a message for Joe before the game. Tigers' second time out Thursday night. More bowl action here on ESPN2. It's Ben Roethlisberger in Miami of Ohio. Mac champions take on Louisville in the GMAC Bowl. 7.30 Eastern from Mobile. They do a uh, Mardi Gras parade down in Mobile. But they only did that kind of thing here in New Orleans, but they ate in port that little bit east and had a good time getting set for that game. I guess that would be tomorrow night, parade night, and then game night Thursday. I had a good friend, uh, we made it to Detroit from LSU. They have a Mardi Gras in Tipperville, Louisiana. That's a different world down there. Nine and three Cardinals tied with Memphis, third behind Southern Miss and TCU in Conference USA this year. So they are discussing third and goal just inside the four. See right here, Danny Wimprock is going to take a shot. Man. That's good flexibility right there by Taylor Casey now. It looked like to me he delivered a shot. Yeah, yeah. That's that linebacker gig coming in to exactly. help. Exactly. Doesn't hurt. Yeah, they're fixing his helmet. He's got to get his helmet fixed. Well, it may have been the pause for the timeout. So third and goal. And another roll by Win Prime. This time, no obvious targets. And his first incompletion. He had hit his first 10 passes. Brandon Kennedy chases him all the way to the sideline this time. And again, it, that looks like a Warren Sapp, Brett Favre duel going on right there. And it was an intentional incompletion. He just threw it away. Yeah. They go, Danny Wimpright, and like he throws the ball away. The coach says he's making good decisions. They know he's playing well. It was a good read by Kennedy. He saw the pulling guard, Butler. He didn't go for the fake. He went the pulling guard, forced the throw. Even if Guskowski hits here, it's a victory for the Mean Green defense. After the fumble on the eighth, they make Memphis set it for three. Good point, David. Good point. After banging one off the upright, Guskowski, sophomore from Madison, Mississippi, connects here. It's 17-3 Memphis. 3.39 to go in the half. All over the streets of downtown. The blue of Memphis has been more than evident. They've really gotten into this. Maybe we'll have more. Back inside the Superdome, Memphis with a 14-point lead. And this is a Memphis crowd that loves its football. And they have waited a long 32 years for this bowl appearance. And Memphis has suddenly become a town that loves and supports all teams. You're looking at Beale Street from the Memphis Tigers on the gridiron to the hardwood and the Grizzlies and the Titans. This is a city that is enjoying unparalleled success. The Grizzlies with Jerry West, Hubie Brown, Pau Gasol are on a franchise record six 
straight wins. And the Tennessee Titans, who of course spent the first two years in Memphis, are enjoying a 10 and 4 season. We'll have more after this kick, Dave. A new arena about to open up just behind Beale Street. Strong on there. Patrick Byrne drives this one low and uh, does a favor to Kevin Moore. He doesn't have to decide to bring it out nine yards deep. Fumbled at the eight this time, brings it out to the 25 here. And as we get close to the half, let's uh, find out what Chris Fowler has in store for us. Well, Dave, it's the Dodge half the report. Trevor Mark alongside. We'll visit live with Ben Roethlisberger. Miami, Ohio is set to battle Louisville in a shootout in the GMAC Bowl in a couple days. These guys bowl season beauties. We'll explain, and we'll talk about the <laughs> unprecedented success of the Sooner football team. Good stuff. And, you know, we'll talk to guys about the situation in Nebraska playing in the Alamo Bowl, the players upset in Lincoln. It's coming up at halftime. Boise State's Ryan did win a big game against TCU. On the roll, Hall, and a great catch by Quinn, the redshirt freshman for 21 yards. That's right about his average. Yeah. He is an excellent deep threat. First off, it's a great throw, too, by Scotty Hall, who seems to me he's more comfortable throwing on the run. And Quinn's coming from the back side of the field. Vogel's in good position, but there's Quinn going up and catching at the highest point with his hands. He doesn't drop the ball. In fact, North Texas coaches said they haven't seen him drop one yet since he's been on campus. Not at all. Even practice, they said. So a much-needed first down. Anything at all welcome offensively right now for Green Green. Hobbs has had this to deal with since the very first possession. Maybe a yard or two here. Let's go back down again to heaven. Dave, as I was saying, Memphis, a proud team. Both its men's and women's basketball teams have combined for a 10-4 and four start on the collegiate season. And the Grizzlies, of course, 13-9 and nine so far. The Tennessee Titans enjoying a 10-4 and four season. And in fact, tonight, the Grizzlies game against the Kings, the Grizzlies are actually showing this game on their scoreboard periodically throughout the night. That is how fired up this town is for Memphis football. The ultimate compliment. You just have to stick your head out anywhere downtown New Orleans find out how to be out. Hall is sacked at the 38-yard line. Safety blitz and Derek Ballard gets to it. This is the kind of thing the quarterback is responsible for. He had a back, Cobbs, to protect him to his left. To his backside, here comes the safety. He knows that this is a big part of the plan. Ballard actually slipped, and it made it more dangerous. It could have been a cartilage tackle or an ankle tackle, an injury. Fortunately, the quarterback's okay, but he was simply out fought that time. And Hall's got to see those things coming and have an answer. They need to isolate on Derek now. They, they haven't picked him up on a blitz yet. That's three times he's blitzed, three times he's made a play. Second time out here just ahead of the expiration of the play clock. And a third and 18 to discuss. I would imagine Daryl Dick is going to defer to his uh, young offensive coordinator, Ramon Flanagan, yeah. here. Right? <laughs> it's all yours, Ramon. Have at it. <laughs> Youngest coordinator in the country at 28. Dickey was 28 when he was offensive coordinator at Memphis not that long ago. Yeah, Thursday night, ESPN with the exclusive announcement of the 2004 NFL Pro Bowl starters on a special edition of NFL Live at 7 Eastern. The NFL Live Pro Bowl Selection Show presented by Sears. Ramon Flanagan, former quarterback at SMU. Dickey coached him at SMU just before he was hired by North Texas. A really uh, interesting, entertaining personality. You see, uh, you can tell he's a young coordinator because he's standing up. Now, you see those those coaches that have been around a while. You don't see too many of those coordinators standing up in the box. Those old guys are sitting there. Yeah. They've got a chili dog, and they've got a, uh, <clears throat> they got a popsicle out of the press room, and they've got all their charts spread out there. Ramon's doing it right out of his head, and he knows what he's doing. He's got a tough job from this point on. Very tough. I think you run the ball, use up the clock, and... and Force Memphis to use a timeout to eliminate them from good field position. Crush the punting game. Tigers ready to tee off. Line the game. 44 of Memphis. They are all over Hall 
and he barely gets off the pass intended for Cobbs. My point exactly, I think you need to run the ball. Right there, they try to get Cobbs involved in a short passing game with the screen, but what it does now, it stops the clock and it allows Memphis to get the ball with one timeout and a dangerous hot quarterback in Danny Wimprime. It's a play action, throwback screen, but when you have a Joe Lee Dunn blitzing defense and you haven't blocked him yet, it's tough to get any pass off, including the screen. Like Ramon's looking for something now. Come on, babe, throw me the ball. Grab the bar to punt. Memphis will have plenty of time to add to this lead and Hoppy again with the fair catch. They're going to have 82 yards to go, though, in a minute 30. Best punt yet by Cadlebar, 44 yards. 90 seconds to go in the first half of Memphis dominated half. There you go, he got him with the rook. Well, it's not checkmate yet for the Tigers, but uh, the strategizing so far has definitely favored them. My dad bought me one of those when I was a kid, and they all turned into football guys. <laughs> Believe it or not, Dave, can you imagine that? War dog <laughs> warrior. Boy dog warrior. They're all boy dog warriors. Candace Cole, as they go as conservative as possible in the first play. Brandon Kennedy, another stop. Uh, we talked about this yards after catch and Memphis makes a living on yards after catcher guys do a nice transition of catching the ball turning into running backs they got 62 North Texas when they have completed the pass have got nowhere and I, I'm a little surprised at that call right there you got a hot quarterback and I realize you're backed up but it's the bowl game you're up 14 go for the jugular man use your timeout and start winging it downfield that goes against old school coaching I know but let's play Old school coach is going to go in with this lead, he hopes. Rock play after loss of two. And Cole gets to the 20 before Cody Spencer and Chris Hurd finish him off. And the clock will stop at 44 seconds. Well, the reason I do that now, North Texas can force them to punt the football. You got a log snap that could be fumbled. You got a punt block which Cobbs and Quinn will come up for the pump block for North Texas. They've blocked a lot of kicks. I said, ride that hot hand, man. Let, the, let Danny get back there and wing it. He hasn't missed yet. Yeah, but that's a very good idea, especially since you haven't stood over there and coached before. <laughs> I, 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 no, I haven't coached, but I've been out on that field. That's 17-3. No, you, you go for that juggler, man. That's 63 me. right there. First possession to Garcia. He finished it off in the quarterback draw. Fourth rushing touchdown of the year. It is first 10 after score by Kelly. And then uh, on a throwaway before they settle for the field goal. That's his only incompletion. One point is 10 of 11, 162 yards. Coach Midget League Soccer. What, what, what uh, Tommy West would say yeah. is going for the jugular means to get in the locker room at 17 to 3. Because if I'm coaching Memphis, I don't think these guys can come back on me. Now, Daryl Dickey has got a plan to have a way to come back he's had receivers running wide open down the field so we'll see some of those routes again in the second half i'm just giving you what tommy west would say to yeah. the team well dickie uses his last time out and hopes they can stop him on third and eight a little conservative cross through cole tries to reverse deal and does not quite get back to the line of scrimmage Greg Jones up for run support and strong safety. And now he can only watch the clock tick down. Having call that timeout with 44 seconds. I hate to keep going back to that point, but I know it's conventional wisdom to hold the ball, protect that. But I think in a game like this, in the offense that you have, take a shot. But they decide not to. Not going to have to kick it. And so seconds will tick off. On the first half here in the New Orleans Bowl in the Superdome where North Texas scored on its first possession and saw the Tigers run off 17 unanswered. Outgaining the Mean Green 208-86 here at the half. And holding the nation's leading rusher, Patrick Cobbs, to 42 yards. And let's go down below to Heather with Tommy Webb. Coach, this is a team that has thrived on its running game all season long, yet you find yourself without your top two backs. How do you change your coaching in the second half to accommodate that? Well, we've got Lakendus Cole in there, our third team back, and 
Yeah, you know, he's just got to play well. He, he just protect the ball right now. Our defense is playing really well, so if we'll just protect the ball. We'll be fine. Coach, you told me that you wanted to be North Texas of a year ago, a very focused team. After 32 years, how do you keep this team focused throughout the second half with this lead? Well, I think this team's very focused right now, and I love the way they came out to play. So, you know, we just got to keep doing the same things. Coach, thanks for your time. Yeah, they've, they've not done a whole lot of celebrating. They've just done a whole lot of dominating so far in their first bowl since 71. 17-3, now to Chris and the Dodge Halftime Report. Well, Dave, thank you. Trev Alberts, Mark May alongside. Welcome to our Dodge Halftime Report. Memphis' first bowl game in 32 years. Looks like they have no trouble focusing down there in New Orleans. They're a good first half. Well, their Memphis's defense is what's impressing me, guys. Joe Lee Dunn, the defensive coordinator, employs that 3-3-5 defense, completely confusing North Texas in the running game. 55 yards rushing as a team in the first half. North Texas, when they can't run the football, they are out of their element trying to throw the football, now getting all kinds of pressure on North Texas's quarterback. Well, I think if you look at North Texas, they need some emotion. They need to get fired up in the second half. Defensively, they've got to come up with some turnovers. Brandon Kennedy's playing a magnificent job. The 5'10", 320-pound defensive tackle. But the problem is they need to create turnovers, come up with a big play defensively. That'll spark the offense. And you said it before, they have to start running the ball offensively, find Can a way do to get it done. All right, coming up at halftime, Big Ben Roethlisberger of Miami of Ohio will visit with us. Look at the team togetherness of the Red Hawks as they hang out in Mobile, getting ready to shoot it out with Louisville two nights from now. We'll have that plus a lot more coming up on our Dodge Halftime Report. At halftime, Tigers 17-3 over the Mean Green down in New Orleans. Back in New Orleans, what denomination would you guys guess Reverend Zombie represents? He's in the voodoo denomination. Did you see it right which there? Is, which seminary would he have attended is the question I'm Well, it wasn't Presbyterian, about. Dave. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> Apparently okay. not. Memphis didn't need any voodoo. They just flat dominated North Texas in the first half. 208 total yards, and it's hard to find anything they didn't do well. But most of all, I have to say that the spreading of the ball, seven different receivers catching the ball, tight, uh, wide receivers, tight ends, running backs, uh, they just spread it all over the field, and, and one prime's been un unstoppable. Yeah, you know, and just to build on that, the yards after catch, you have 62 yards, which is a big part of their offense. What North Texas has to do is they have to start winning first downs to put themselves in a position to run or pass on third down, and they got to get cops rolling. And they had three great chances at big plays and couldn't hit any of them. Left Brian hit almost everything. Yeah, he was he was hot, and that's the thing that coaches. He had a rough two games previous. He comes into this game with confidence. He's a competitor. He was challenged not only by himself, but he was challenged by the coaching staff, and he's really stepped up his game here at home. See Cobb's right there. He, I, I talk about Cobb's, he has to get going. He's at 42 yards, 12 well, he rushes. 12 rushes for 42 yards, but 20 of them came on the one that's run. That's right. That's and right. And he has tripped repeatedly on this surface. Now, whether it's the fault of the surface or his shoes or whether he's just not picking his feet up is something we can't tell. Average is 157, best in the country. 115 below that as North Texas picks off to begin the second half. Chris Kelly on the return. And just out across the 20. Danny Winfrey back to work. Absolutely spectacular in the first half. And let's check in down below with him. Dave, I just had a chance to talk to Coach Dickey. He was obviously very concerned about the 55 yards rushing in the first half. The big question, how do you fix it? Well, he said he made several major changes to his blocking scheme that he'll use in this second half. But he also said we need to continue to mix it up. We cannot rely on just Patrick Cobbs to, to win this game for us. Yeah, the 20-yarder early trip when it would have been 70 and a score. That ball missing on two wide open would-be touchdowns. Memphis has not missed on really anything. And another wide open receiver, Garcia again, down near the 30. He has burned him three times now. And this one goes 46 yards. He's got a brilliant way to come out to start the second half. Don't just hand it off. Get into some misdirection with the boot and see if you can get a big one down the middle. A perfect throw by Winfrey again. And really, North Texas is on the ropes here, early in the third quarter. 63-yarder early, key pass interference. And now gets them down 
to a first and ten from the 32. Oh, Attendance oh, Cole upended by Evan Cardwell. The receivers have just done a marvelous job. There you see Davis, Garcia, Avery. There are others. Pratcher made a big catch. Kelly made a touchdown catch. Even when the ball hasn't been thrown perfectly, they've made Winfrey look good, and that's what great receivers are, are supposed to do. This time, Darren White, who started in motion and hit inside the 25. We are told Darren Parquette will not return. The second team running back, they're already missing their starter, D'Angelo Williams, with a knee injury, and now Parquette after an early shoulder injury. So, Lakendis called the third teamer, their third leading rusher, and if something would happen to him, they are down to a redshirt freshman who has not touched the ball in any way, shape, or form, Brian Davis. Well, I think Cole's done a great job of filling in. He's really running hard knowing his opportunity. He's making the most of it. Avery went on motion and flags and whistles. They got Butler jumping. He's a pulling guard. He wants to get out there and get in front of people. A lot of times those guys will get excited, jump out of their stance. Dead ball, false start, offense, five-yard penalty, remains third down. Penalties have not been a major issue in the low 40s, about 43 yards a game in penalties for Memphis. Tommy West team reasonably disciplined, but you sure don't want to blow an opportunity like this. They were right down there third and two, now they got third and seven, and there's a big, big difference statistically in converting. Butler's daddy was... Uh... My linebacker coach up at Cleveland, so you know he comes from the football family. Keith is a great linebacker for the Seattle Seahawks. Bad snap. Good hot throw, and Wim Prime recovers it back at the 41. It is a huge loss, but it's not a disaster. And it could have been. Gene Frederick, number 76, a very good offensive center, normally reliable. But I mentioned that he struggled in pregame warm-ups with his gun snaps, and that one went completely berserk. Slipped in his hands, his thumb slipped off the ball, and it just went awry. And those are things that you can't predict and you cannot tolerate in the center quarterback exchange. And what they've done is to get themselves stopped, which is really fortunate for North Texas. Loss of 12 on the bad snap. Brandon Roberson will try to pin this one somewhere inside the 10 yard line. He may just do it too. Nope, doesn't get the bounce. And they'll net this 21 yards. It's funny there, Johnny Quinn took a shot. Now that ball wasn't near Johnny Quinn. Johnny Quinn wasn't near the ball. But the Memphis defender comes down. Derek Ballard comes in and tackles him. They're lucky they didn't get a 15 yarder on that. Yeah, and look at Tommy West's face. He knows full well what could have happened there had they been able to punch that in. So, North Texas will take it for the first time here in the second half, down 14. Well, the Elvi have made it into the Superdome. North Texas new coming in. They had to hit every big play opportunity. They've missed at least three. They have tied it. Andy Blunt 20 yards behind any defender underthrown. Cobbs is ready to go 70. Trips up at midfield, settles for 20. And then running this one back from nine yards deep, Kevin Moore fumbles. Kato Mott recovered at the eight. They did hold the Tigers to a field goal there. But North Texas just 35 yards since their opening possession. And Cobbs again has absolutely nowhere to go. Well, you've got, it's, it's, it's stopping down and stopping on first down. That time Taylor does a great job. And anytime you have a first team running back, a guy that can hurt you like Cobbs, how you slow him down, make him change directions, you get penetration right there. Eric Taylor got great penetration. We talked about what they had to do, Memphis defense. They've been great tonight, 1.3 yards on first down. And when on the offensive side of the ball, they've turned into running backs after they catch the ball and make something happen. Well, we'll see where Daryl Ricky has changed the blocking size. Mentioned to Heather at the half. And if they produce anything good. Just to the 21-yard line, this time goes Cobbs, running into the nose tackle, Albert Mee. You know, you can draw up any blocking assignment, any blocking scheme you want, but if you don't sustain blocks, as Coach Curry will tell you, it does not matter what kind of scheme you have. And right now, Memphis's defensive line is beating them to the punch. They're, they're getting their hands inside, and they're disengaging where North Texas 
is having a problem sustaining, and the defensive coordinator, Joe Lee Dunn, said he felt they could exploit the offensive line of North Essex, and guess what? He's been right. Another third and long is one out of six converting third downs in North Texas offense. All play fake. Finally has plenty of time going deep for Quinn and overthrows him. He had a step on O.C. Collins. Major difference in this football game has been when North Texas has a receiver that has a step, the ball is six yards overthrown. When Wimbrine gets a shot at a deep one, he has hit them, all of them. And when he didn't throw it well, his receiver came back and got it. Ball now three of eight for 31 yards. And a low snap handled nicely by Cadler Bar. Gets off a decent kick, too. All Cole Hockey has done is fair catch. Well, he's not looking to run it now. Nope. 43 for this fair catch, 36 for this punt. And the Tigers have enjoyed the advantage in field position most of the night. So 10.36 to go third quarter. Again, North Texas unable to move it. Just 87 total yards so far. We've got a lot to envy in this New Orleans Bowl. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of the 2003 New Orleans Bowl. Brought to you by the Chrysler Pacifica. Well beyond the SUV. And by Old Navy. Old Navy will hook you up for the holidays. Back inside the Superdome, Memphis up 17 to 3. But for North Texas per capita, it just might be home to more famous faces than any other university. Familiar alums include notable musicians like Nora Jones, Don, Hay Don Henley, Pat Boone, Roy Orbison. Add to that list two former Miss Americas, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and last but not least, our very Screaming Eagle. Dave, was that back at what, class of 95 maybe? Uh, no, it was before <laughs> that and, and last and definitely least. That, that's one of those, what's wrong with this pictures, Helen, uh, Heather? I'm telling you, there are much bigger names to be putting on that graphic than me, Heather. <laughs> you know, the other big question we get is why the mean green? Well, the name started in the late 60s as a moniker for the defense inspired by the team's future NFL Hall of Famer, Joe Green. It then evolved into the team's nickname, and most of the sports teams have followed suit. But their mascot is still that scrappy eagle you see around here. And Lakendis Cole on the carry to the 47-yard line. And Dave, a little bit more. We had to bust your chops just a bit. The proud alum. We went way. Oh my lives. goodness! Is that Bruce Jenner? No, <laughs> that would be Dave Barnett in that butterfly collar. Our very proud colleague. Oh, look who else we have! College fan time. This would be our statistician, Kirk McCarley, so I'm I'm joined in my total I'm embarrassment. that last picture was the very first boy band. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Rip Prime almost intercepted. And Mark Keith Knowlton upset because he had a real shot at that one, and North Texas needing any kind of turnover. Well, Chris Hurd had a big sack. Knowlton had a big interception. But fortunately for North Texas, Memphis linemen were downfield. So they get something right decent out of it. Yeah, yeah, good job by Wimpryne again. That was probably the first time in this ball game where we saw him try to make something happen that wasn't there. And that's what they were trying to avoid. But it was a good job. downfield offense. The penalty is declined. Fourth down. Of using his feet. See, it, it was it was a real happy time because I finally passed the test, and we had to celebrate. I that. think you should go back to the page, boy. <laughs> well, you were so precious. I think not. <laughs> well, Coach and I were surprised that you didn't have your own page in the media guide, Dave. I know uh, everybody was telling me. I, no, I wasn't surprised. <laughs> Wimp Prime, who quick kicked in the first half, that one bangs off Craig Jones, and he quickly jumps on to the 24. The versatility of Danny Wimprime. 29 yards. So have you had your fun now? Can we get back to the game? <laughs> I really do want to say something about the football game. What's happened here, and this very is significant for the rest of the game looking forward, is that North Texas has hung in there. And they could they could have been down two more touchdowns by now, but 
Memphis has shot themselves in the foot, plus North Texas, I think, is playing a little harder. Well, they are playing a little bit harder, but they have to get something going offensively. They can't yeah. keep counting on their defense to keep Danny Wimprine and the Memphis offense off the field. They've got to get something going offensively, at least the first down. And there you go, first down. Little room, finally, and Cobb breaks this one. 15 yards. His first since that 20-yarder near 70-yarder on their opening possession with any kind of blocking and any kind of running. Well, David, we went to the different blocking scheme, and what we're going to come here is we're going to counter the counter OF. The O meaning the backside guard pulling right there, and the F would be the fullback on a leading. And it's a trapping scheme instead of a zone running scheme where it gives the offensive lineman and backs a little bit better angle on blocking the defenders, and you were able. See, here's the F right there. There's the O. There you have two guys kicking out, and Cobbs now has space to work and time to work. Good call, good adjustment by Daryl Dickey at halftime. All on the option, just the second one of these they've run, and he struggles, gets about five yards out of it. Chris mentioned that Joe Lee Dunn, with his gambling blitzing style, does not like to face the option because that forces assignment football. When you're doing the stunting, and you can almost see it in his face, I think Chris's phrase was a headache. <laughs> and it's second and five, which is another thing that you talked about, Chris. And you know a rarity, too, is you uh, rarely see a defensive coordinator with no headsets on the sidelines. No, he doesn't, he, doesn't want any, he doesn't wear socks either. No yeah. headset, no socks. Ramon Flanagan met Joe Lee Dunn when he was quarterback for SMU. And eight seconds into the season, a Joe Lee Dunn Arkansas defense dislocated Flanagan's hip when he was... Highly tattered quarterback for SMU, and he was out for the season on the season's first play. Hobbs to the 47, third and three. I see now they go back to the conventional lead draw, and again, they're not getting any push up front. They're, the offensive line is playing high. No, but it's third and two. They had second and five. Now it's third and two and a half. If they can make this first down, then they'll be having their way, even with the fact that they're a little outmanned up front. Fans asking for a stop. First time North Texas has moved it since their first series. Possibly positive short of the third. And they did not make it. I think that was a tactical mistake by Ramon because he went unbalanced to the field, sent a man in motion to get an extra blocker, but in so doing, he announced to Joe Lee what he was going to do, and they ran it down. No, they did, and uh, speed on this Memphis defense is what it's built on. They're not overly huge up front, but they all can run, as witnessed on the last toss sweep, chasing the number one back in the country down from behind. So they move it, but they still can't cross midfield. And Pat Bar will again kick to Hopper. But first, North Texas will have to burn a timeout. So you don't burn a timeout here. You take the five yards because of the field position. No kidding. Yeah, that's... No, that's not smart football right now. I think maybe you have coached. <laughs> no, yeah, I told you, you little little girl soccer. We, we learned something, big well, man. We, we led the league in penalties. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that, huh? But Daddy, do you want me to kick her again? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure you didn't coach that. Thursday night, more bowl action here on ESPN2. Miami of Ohio, Matt Champions, led by quarterback Ben Roethlisberger. A lot of NFL attention, and the Louisville Cardinals. We'll be waiting in Mobile in the GMAC Bowl, Thursday night, 7.30 Eastern ESPN2. We talked to a lot of NFL scouts, and, and uh, if Ben decides to come out, a lot of people have him above Eli Manning. Uh, that's a strong statement on how good he is. If anybody saw the MAC championship, that would not be that surprising to hear. Yeah. And, and I think uh, there's a lot of good quarterbacks in there, not, not to mention the Heisman Trophy winner, Jason White. Congratulations to him. That's a picture of perseverance there. Two ACLs coming back. He, he may come back for a sixth year. He's I saw thinking that. about uh, getting another medical redshirt and uh, perhaps potentially to play again next year. Memphis team met with Eli Manning early in the season. A huge win for the Tigers. At that point, no one could really tell that uh, Eli would have the season he had or certainly that Ole Miss would have the season they ended up with. And then somehow they lost to Mississippi State. Even harder to figure. 
Cadlebar really booming this one and gets a perfect bounce and it will be killed at the six yard line by Cody Spencer. 45 yards about as well as you can do it. And the Tigers are back way up, but they do have a 14 point lead in this match of wits between the veteran defensive mind, Joe Lee Dunn, and the 28 year old offensive coordinator, Ramon Flanagan. Well, North Texas has Memphis back up, and if any sign really captures the feeling for Memphis and the fans, that one does the job. Both Coach and I have been impressed with the enthusiasm of the players and the coaches and the it, excitement about being there. It was electric during warm-ups on the field, players and the fans. So any worries that Memphis would play as if they're just happy to be here and getting here was the whole job have really been unfounded. They're one of the more solid games of the year. With their own goal line here, and just the third incompletion of the night by Win Prime. And we talked about what Memphis has to do to win this football game, and so far things are falling into place. Paul, the quarterback, Scotty, is only able to three for eight for 31 yards. They eliminated Cobb 62 yards, but two of those, a lot of those yards are two runs, and you're getting solid play from your star, and Danny Win Prime, who's responding to the pressure of the coaches. And at one point, real quick is that North Texas has a chance to create some field position for their offense this series. Cole, unable to get any kind of corner room over there and chased down by Kennedy. Yeah, Big Booger, you know, Big Booger got him. Big Booger does a great job of pursuing down the line of scrimmage, and he's tough to move and watch his pursuit angle and coming down and finishing the tackle. And the one thing I like about the tackle that he made is he brought his feet he ran through the guy as opposed to running it to the guy. Right there, he beats the center, just disengages, and this is nice. And look the big man come down and wrap his arms and bring his feet and run through as opposed to run to the man. Run through him, Booger. Brother Canoy, the NFL, proud of that one. And third and 12 coming for Memphis. And flags and early movement, it looked like on Cole this time. Down to the snap. We have dead ball, full start, offense. So it'll be third and even more. And Brandon Kennedy, the two time Sun Belt Conference Player of the Year, we summarize his night here. Right Not there. a tall guy, but big and excellent with his body control. Can stay on his feet when we're seeing him at full speed. And when he goes full speed, he is a load. Take a look at him now, right here, to see if he can get a pass rush on him. Run it on third and 14. Adrian Owasson and Cody Spencer combined for that stop. And Gene Frederick took Booger for a ride right there. Now, Booger might need some cab fare to get back to the huddle because he got him. Yeah, watch. Gene got mad because Booger took care of him last time. Look at Gene. Gene's going to finish the block this time. And Booger said, hey, hey, I'm not used to that backpedal. Well, I'm no DB. Go ahead and knock him up, Booger. He got you there. You got him last time. That's it. Yeah, Booger would have felt real good if they'd have flagged him and had a first down here. Mm -hmm. Check the snap here by Frederick. Not much of a punt. Catch it. And uh, Jonas Buckles decides to bounce in front. Got to catch that away. ball. Oh, got to catch that football. You got to fair catch that. All right, that was a line drive. I thought he had, yes, time. I had, he had time to take that one. Well, one run. way or the other. Don't be shy. You take it at the 40 yard line or you take it up the field. So, North Texas at the 43 of Memphis, some of the best field position they've had all night. Thursday night, ESPN with the exclusive announcement of the 2004 NFL Pro Bowl starters on a special edition of NFL Live at 7 Eastern. The NFL Live Pro Bowl selection show presented by Sears on ESPN. Field position was created by the defense. I believe it is essential that North Texas get something out of this field position. Memphis in the blitz. Hall backs up. Going to clean and again overthrows an open receiver. The story for him all night long. 
All just three out of nine, 31 yards through the air. Well, they come with a counter option look at Hall, who's going to run a post and he's going to turn it in back to the corner. There's the post. And watch a little corner out right there. And Hall threw the ball over his inside shoulder. He's got to put that out toward the sideline and let it either he or his man have a chance to catch the ball. You got to make a play now, baby. Come on. Make a play if you want to get in this. Not typical of him at all. The 59% passer would be sixth rated in the country with one more attempt per game. Cobbs unable to get any kind of corner room, and he will lose back to the 46-yard line. Chased there by Wesley Smith. Coach, help me uh, understand what's going on here now. If you're an offensive guard and you have this happening to you, watch right there, and you're able to get knock the knock two people off and get penetration and get two blockers. How's an offensive guard prevent that from happening? I mean, the offensive guard comes off low and hard under the outside peck and knocks him back yeah. and get drilled in the backfield yeah. and take up two blockers. You got that's, a speeding ticket going your, into those blockers. Man. Answer to your question. All right. Just some more cab fare. Let me coach, let me coach up, Coach. I got you. Ball is buried on third and 12. Greg Harper, the linebacker. And what we just witnessed was Joe Lee Dunn, yep. with all his years and wisdom, outsmarting the offensive brain trust of North Texas. Flag is down here. John Smith of the Big East. We have all sat in dead ball unsportsmanlike on both teams. Offense. And defense, fourth down. Second time we've had that, too. Well, there's some jawing going on out there, but there's a lot of thinking going on. And Ramon Flanagan's getting another education from Joe Lee. Joe Lee knew very well that that's a quarterback draw down, so he just filled every gap. You know, until until, and unless Scott Hall can hit open right. receivers, they have they've had four opportunities for big, big plays tonight. And Scott Hall has just over-adrenalized all of them. He's overthrown all of them. He did the same thing in the New Mexico State game. We talked to him about it yesterday. He said, look, I just got too excited. I was overthrowing the ball that day. And he's doing the same thing tonight. And that's life. Sometimes when you're in a big game, that happens. Fortunately for his team, they're still in it. Even though they didn't get anything done here, they can maintain field position. They can kick them deep again. And you're right, Coach. And the other thing, once Joe Lee realizes that Scott's struggling, he gets more courageous now. He's going to start going in that Joe Lee playbook that runs pretty deep. It's in his head right there and just going to come out and start drawing them up in the dirt. Let's try this blitz. No, I want this blitz, Coach. We're going to be drawing straws for Scott Hall pretty soon the way it's going. So finally, after the offsetting penalties, Brad Cadlebar will try to do exactly what he did last time, which is pin the Tigers inside the camp. All, all Hoppy has done all night is get fair catches, and this one not nearly as good. I think that's yard. by orders. Orders to Evidently. fair catch. Memphis from there, 16 when we come back to New Orleans. inside the Superdome where North Texas's defensive star Brandon Kennedy is being hampered by severe cramping in both his calves and his hamstrings. Now during halftime, the athletic staff did administer an IV of saline solution to try and hydrate it. It is very, very humid in here. Brandon doesn't know whether or not he'll be able to make it throughout the rest of the fourth quarter, guys. Well, he's in there right now. We'll see how far he can go. Rodgers at their 16. 346 to go third quarter. One prime swing it out for Avery. Receiver hampered by an MCL injury, cost him the last two games of the regular season. Tackled by Taylor Casey. What a great job by Taylor Casey! Came up, took on the blocker, stayed square, got shed the blocker, made the play, let the pursuit come inside out. I'll tell you, I'm impressed with the overall intensity of the Green defense in the second half. Yeah, they didn't panic when they gave up the big play early. They come back and responded. Well, Mupa's helping out there with some uh, self-destructive behavior. They fake, and one prime looks up with some room for a second or two, and then it evaporated, and Michael Pruitt got him low. Look at our ESPN2 game track. 
Here's the third quarter now. First half belonged to Danny Wimpry. He had only one incompletion. He threw for a touchdown. He rushed for a touchdown. And the yak yards really favored Memphis. 82, and a lot of those on two completions to Aaron Garcia for 109 yards. He was involved on another long pass interference call against Jeremy Pearl. Make a case for him for MVP tonight. If not for the, the almost perfect play of Wimprine. Wimprine showing some hesitancy, a little uncertainty for the first time in this football game. And you can see the tension mount in the offense of Memphis. Boy, yeah, coach West is getting on somebody right there. Now he might be getting on Wimprine or he might be getting on his coach over there. Calling, uh, calling the plays for it. Memphis timeout. All right, everybody likes to pick the bowls. Everybody likes uh, the basketball brackets. Here's your chance now to do it in bowl season. The Sonic Bowl Mania Challenge is the official ESPN office pool. You can join it. You can enter by logging on to ESPN.com. Search Bowl Mania, register for a free account, and compete against us and our other college football announcing colleagues. You pick the winner of all 28 bowl games, assign your level of confidence, which game you are most confident in your prediction, all the way down to your least confident prediction. And the highest point total wins a trip to a bowl game next season. We will accept entries all the way through 8 Eastern Christmas night. Your picks in? No? Yeah. That's not I, very I, confident. I have, yeah. a, little, I have, no, I have I, a little trouble with that computer I think, thing, Dave. I think we're not allowed to vote in office pools. No, are we? you're this required. NCAA? You're required. There's no money changing hands here. You're required. We don't get any money? <laughs> no. Well, why would we? Uh, would well, they pay you, Coach? You don't need any money now. Yeah, right, Chris. <laughs> you played when the money was flowing, pal. <laughs> I played in the penny days. Penny less. Three man rush on Win Prime. Gunning for Avery. He almost hauled it in one handed. I'll tell you, a guy that's played well for North Texas is Michael Pruitt. Anytime you can get pressure with a three man rush, it's an outstanding effort coming off the corner, beating his man one on one. And, and North Texas is lucky that that wasn't complete because their linebackers, third and ten, you've got to read receivers and take away seam routes. That ball should have been caught. Should have been caught. Avery should have laid out, put two hands on the yes, football, sir. and brought it in. Yes, sir. But he hadn't been playing. And when you hadn't practiced and you hadn't played, that's the kind of thing that happens to you. So again, Wim Prime to punt. And has a rugby rollout look to him and furiously backpedaling to the 40 for the fair catch of Johnny Quinn. 42 on Wim Prime's best punt of the night. Again, they got good field position to work with, yet they've been not able to capitalize at all, at least so far in the second half, on the field position that they've been given. Their defense has been stout. Well, you asked me a question in a break, Chris. What happened to the counter O? Yeah, I mean, we've seen it all once. Right. So yeah. we saw it once. It went for about 14 yards. We haven't seen it again. And young Ramon Flanagan, who's a sharp young coach, is going to learn to come back to stuff that's working. Texas going for nine straight, which would equal them with uh, Boise State for the second longest current win streak behind Miami of Ohio. They won the draw for Cobbs, and he gets maybe two to the 44. Tackled there by Eric Taylor. It's been a very frustrating night for the nation's leading rusher. 60 yards on. Uh, 62 now on 19 carries. Barely three yards per carry. Most of average it is five runs. and a half. Most of it, most of it on two runs. You look there, now you see taking the Memphis's defense. They got all guys up here in the box for the run. You've got to be able to throw something down and give them a chance. Jamel Branch, the latest to struggle with his footing. On the little hitch, he loses back to the 40, and they're looking at third and 12. That's North, been the story all night. North Texas really struggling with this surface. They're not accustomed. Uh, they're, obviously, they're accustomed to playing on regular grass, it would appear, because they're planting what they hope are cleats. You're shaking your head no, Dave? Uh, not since the Joe Green era. No, really? It's been a while since so they've, they've, they've played on artificial turf. Not they're, this time. They're not accustomed to this. They're not a, accustomed to the Astros. They're part. accustomed to better traction. Whatever it is, it is uh, it's affected both teams, which seems to have affected the Green more. Hall looks up again, open, and this time he connects with Quinn to the 35. It's a 
good job of recognition and Quinn is Hall's comfort level receiver. He's going to look for him with he's going to run a seven route or a corner route. Scotty Hall shows good composure, avoiding a rush and delivering a strike to his big play wide receiver and Johnny Quinn, who does a good job of securing the football. Nice adjustment with the hips. That's what they need to do on first down. They've got 11 people playing about six yards off the ball. Get over their heads and throw it. Take your shot. 25 yards. Hall had thrown for a total of 27 for the game before that one. Down to the 35 of the Tigers. And after the fake to Tom's, that one should have been intercepted right in Coot Terry's hands. Eric Taylor, number 50, is having a superb game for Memphis. Defensive end has been in the face of the quarterback. He's made plays in the running game. I'd have to say so far that Eric for yeah. Memphis and Pruitt, 93 uh, for the other guys, North Texas. Yeah. Those two guys have had the best game. Look at him keep his feet right in the quarterback's face. Doesn't let him outside. Second down and 10. And the shotgun option comes. Shows that burst and is gone. Touchdown. 35 yards. He finally breaks one. Now the pupil has become the teacher. Ramon Flanagan, the fine offensive coordinator for North Texas, has said, okay, Coach Dunn, let's see if you got an answer for this one. A little option, play side, out of the gun. And this gritty group in green, the mean green, is right back in this football game, and they have hung on long enough to get themselves a chance to do this. As will do it to make it a one touchdown game, 17 to 10. Okay, it's going to take a They're going to run the speed option. That means it's direct snap out of the shotgun. He reads the outside linebacker picks and watch a little shake and bake. Give him a leg, and he will take it away. Right there, Vogel overruns it. He doesn't close the gate in front of the ball. And when that young man spells the touchdown, he'll go ahead and find it for me. He did. And then look at the coach West right there. Being a defensive guy, you don't want to give up big plays on the ground. His fellows gave up a big play on the ground. He, he, that, that didn't make him happy. He just watched the game get away from him. Now, the, the sentiment on these signs is aimed at the Dope Walker Award, folks, because uh, Patrick Hobbs was not even considered for that award that goes to the best running back in the country, and their excuse was, well, he wasn't nominated before the season. What that has to do with anything, Nothing. I'm very curious to know, but we got the nation's leading yeah. rusher playing 35 miles away from Dallas, where that award is, uh, is headquartered, and, and you know, they look at character for it, very high character guy, so there, there were a lot of people very upset that Cobbs was not even considered for the Dope Walker. Today. Well, now I'm officially very upset about it, too. But there are too many individual awards in football. Football's not an individual sport, but if you're going to have them, then you include the guys that can run like this. This guy's a football player. He can do it all. He, yeah, right tackles. he doesn't get himself into bad situations. He doesn't get discouraged. Keeps coming at you. Chris Kelly from the one. That is belted at the 26-yard line. From the flags again, Allen Harrison flies in for the special teams hit. I'll give you Kelly credit, too, for hitting it up in there now. He's not running on the eggs or running oh, shot. Oh, no, no, no. He's, he's coming after it. Yeah. Well, while the officials are conferring, let's talk about Patrick Cobbs. He's also a very unselfish player. His teammates love him. He shares the credit with everybody on the team rather than to take it for himself. Top three in the country this year on the ground. You have Michael Turner of Northern Illinois. 37 yards per game. Number two, the Sooner defeater, Darren Strolls. And then you have Patrick Cobbs at 157 yards per game. 97 tonight on 20 carries. And a 35-yard touchdown to get the mean green back in this New Orleans goal. The unselfishness you talked about, the 
Bill Lickie says he went to him late in the Arkansas State game, said, Going to return, we have a live ball, holding foul against the returning team. That's a 10 yard penalty from the end of the run. Said, You're just a few yards away from the single game record, the season record. The dead ball, personal foul, both ways. Offset, first down. That's a third offsetting penalty. But anyway, Patrick Cobb said, nope, Coach, we got this game. Let the backups play. They work as hard as I do. That's what Coach is talking about. Our football's a team game. And right there's the epitome of a team player. And Cobbs. You got, you got Booger down there getting them going. Now let's see if he can take his cheerleading in the play right here. We'll show you. Get an ISO on Booger. He's right over the center. Quarter blitz. And Cole busted. A much harder hitting North, Pete, North Texas defense now. Walter Priestley coming in to join Chris Hurd on the last play of the third quarter. And the Mean Green get the only points of the third quarter. Yeah, Booger made him cut it back. Let the linebackers go get him. Memphis did anything it wanted in the first half. Raymond Kennedy and company turned things around a bit. They're very much in this New Orleans Bowl with the fourth quarter still to come. Well, this might be the noisiest single moment of the three New Orleans Bowls that have been played here in the Superdome as we begin the fourth quarter with Bill Curry, Chris Steelman, and Heather Cox, Dave Barnett. It was 17-3 Memphis. They did anything they wanted in the first half. Well, Texas could get nothing, but they got a 35-yard touchdown run by Patrick Cobbs. And Wood Clark unloading for Avery, broken up this time in triple coverage. Greg Jones got back there from strong safety. Yeah, that's the good news, but the bad news is Avery was wide slapped open, and Wimprine, for the first time tonight, could not get the ball to his open receiver. The bad news for North Texas is, yes, they're playing harder, and they're running to the football better, but they are still getting beat deep. Look at Avery. He's got four steps on the entire secondary. Craig Jones, most notably, number 22. Buckles coming from the other side of the field, a late arrival. They're lucky there. They need nine. They've missed their last six third down conversions. And five of 13 for the night now. Went Bryant again deep, again wide open. And again, Jones gets a hand on it intended for Darren Garcia. Well, they went a little conservative in the third quarter. So much yeah. for that, the fourth quarter. Right here, Dave. Take a look. Now, I want to show you something. This isn't a cover two. Now, if you're going to play cover two, what you have to do, this guy's got to get a jam on the receiver to slow him down so he can give his safety time to get over the top. He lets Garcia run straight through. He puts too much pressure on the safety. The safety didn't have time there. And the only reason why North Texas isn't going to have the field goal block team on is because Garcia dropped the ball. But if you're in cover two, you've got to jam the wide receivers to slow down the timing of the route. You mean the extra point, bro. Thank you. Same thing. <laughs> Kicker's a kicker. Quinn chases this one point back to the 42. With some room, a flag down on a block way behind the play. Quinn to the 37-yard line. Knowlton and Darren White got tangled up after Quinn had run a good 10 yeah. yards beyond yeah, them. A great, great point. I mean, that, that's, that's a, 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 a not a smart football play. The guy's pass you, you call save it. You can block a guy in the back. All you got to do is go up and belly bump him. They'll never call you. You can throw him in the back all you want. Just throw your hands up. Look, that's what the coach is saying, man. Belly bump him. Save it. But you go ahead and knock the guy in the back after the guy's running by you. You're killing yourself. Going to return. Holding. Return team. Ten guys from the spot. And that's even worse. First down. You see Marquise coming right here. Quinn does a good job of getting the outside. And right there, see that right there? Tackle, man. Let him go. You don't need to hold him. You got him. You got him. Let him go. He's gone. He's well, off. In effect, that is about a 30-yard penalty on Marquise Nolton. Where it had absolutely no chance of helping Johnny Quinn. So Cobbs will get nine hard. Fought yards on first down. Now you get the power O play right now. This is a difference. Now what this allows North Texas offensive linemen to do 
is go ahead and block with angles as opposed to blocking straight up man to man. Our game track Cobb on this 35 yard cutback. Finally a touchdown for the nation's second leading scorer. In addition to being the top runner in the country this year, this fractions behind the nation's scoring leader Cedric Benson of Texas. Over 100 for the night. Cobbs again with the pass and again a flag is down way behind the play. Here goes Cobbs. O.C. Collins prevents the touchdown inside the 15, but we wait for the flag way back behind the line. It is holding North Texas and Corey Dickey doesn't realize yet. Now she does. The 46-yard run is all for nothing. If you ever think penalties are not a huge part of a football game, you can take the penalty yardage, add 76 yards to it, and in the last four plays, that's what North Texas has relinquished because of carelessness. Going to run, holding offense, 10 yards to the previous spot, remains second down. Eric Taylor, number 50, was held, defensive end. Yeah, I'll tell you, Zuniga. Well, wait a minute now. Was Zuniga yeah, got him? Zuniga was called, but I, that's a very questionable call in my mind. Well, he brought the left hand over and swatted him down from behind. Took a look. Okay, if, you keep, if you keep his right, hand. Watch the right guard. We can see him right here. All right, there it is. It was absolutely a good call. I was yeah. wrong. You can't bring that back hand and sling him on the ground. Just can't do that. Well, the this offensive one, line leader has cost him big time. This one, in effect, a 57-yard penalty, and Hall for a loss back at the 29. They had Cobbs at the 13 of Memphis before that flag, and now they're at their own 29. So 87 yards they've given up because of penalties. 87 in the last four or five plays. Yep. Now, this is a team that was penalized at 89 yards her game during the season and when we mentioned it to the coaches and players yesterday they were sort of flipping about it but it has just killed them here yeah, right here is Johnny Quinn that's the guy he's like to go to in this type of situation well protected all oh, again lucky it wasn't intercepted this time by Will Hyden he returned one for a touchdown against Houston this year, right in his hands that time. Yeah, they had, North Texas had three guys in the same area, and that's a, obviously a missed route run by, by the receivers. A hand grenade would have got them all. You know, you got to spread the field a little bit and let that defense spread out so you can find a hole. Boy, a night of what could have been for North Texas. Cobbs twice has broken long ones that uh, didn't produce anything missing wide open receivers he's been Scott Hall's issue all night two hugely costly penalties in the last couple of minutes here Hoppy finally returning yeah. a punt good for him well for Daryl Dickey it's an interesting week because he used to coach at Memphis when he did he met his wife Tori who was just all torn up about that penalty a minute ago. Heather will talk with Mrs. Dickey. We'll come back to New Orleans. North Texas just a touchdown away from tying things up. Emotions up for all-time high for Coach Dickey, well, also for his wife, Tori. Now, you've been very emotional throughout this game, but of a very unusual allegiance in the fact that you graduated from Memphis. So who do you root for? Uh, there's no question. North Texas, all the way. I was beginning to wonder, not a lot of green, not any blue. You looked a little bit neutral, but Coach told me you know who pays the paychecks, right? Oh, absolutely. I'm proud of Memphis. It's my alma mater. I'm glad they're here, but we got to win this game. Are these the longest 12 minutes in your life? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> any words of wisdom for Coach? Um, he'll do great. He always does. We'll let you enjoy it and try not to be too nervous throughout the rest of this one, okay? Go in green! <laughs> She reminds me so much of someone I know and love <laughs> with all my heart, Dr. Carolyn Curry, who's sitting at home watching this, and that's exactly the way she was in the stands, and everybody around her drew strength and said, okay, Dr. Curry, you tell them, and we'll cheer with you. And uh, obviously that's what Tori Dickey does as well in support of her husband and a lot of great, great ladies that are coaches' wives. Memphis hit with a false start. 
And they're going to North Texas to jump and uh, yeah, but snap it. I don't think, I think North Texas got back and nobody moved. I think they're going to come up second and 16. Well, Memphis has not been able to get anything going. The last 12 plays have netted minus three. Defense, five yard penalty. Still first down. See, if I, I think they blew that yeah, call. If, if I'm Danny Wimprime, what I do now, I don't take a knee, though. If I feel like I got a free play, I think you go ahead and have your receiver recognize their offsides, maybe take a shot downfield. I think the officials missed it because. See, nobody moved on the offensive line for Memphis. If the defense draws right, them and is in right. the neutral zone, it's always on the defense. The defense moved. Nobody moved for Memphis, and they got back. But the officials were on it, and I walked. Four straight three and outs for Memphis. Wim Prime, this time wide open, Darren White. And so much for the three and outs. Down to the 42 of the mean green and a gain of 21 yards. That's that skinny post. If you're playing that too deep coverage like... North Texas was playing, and you do not jam the inside receiver. Puts too much pressure on the safety. He's caught between the proverbial rock and hard place between the outside guy and the inside guy. Doesn't have much of a chance. Well, the linebacker's got to get underneath that and, and prevent that throw. That's the only. He's got to get a jam on who, whoever it is, either it's a linebacker or corner, somebody. Four wide draw play. Robert Douglas, ex linebacker, on his first carry inside the 40, gets three. Adrian Owasson and Cody Spencer get Douglas. Just in to give McKendis Cole a breather. And Darren Parquette sprained his right shoulder early in the game and has not been seen since the first quarter. Looking forward in this football game, what's happened is the Bean Green has come out and they have punched Memphis right in the mouth in the second half. Says, y'all want to play some tackle? We're playing tackle. Let's get it on. The USA's football game. rushing leader, Angelo Williams, not suited up as you saw. Avery with the hitch. I mean, there's some hitting going on down there in the pit, in the secondary, out on the periphery. <laughs> North Texas has waked up. You don't win 18 in a row in your in your league, Chris, unless you're that kind of team. Well, they, I, mean, I think they got tired of getting punched in the face. They come out the second half and say, look, we, what, would you, what do we do best? We're physical with people, and they have taken the fight to Memphis this second half. The penalties, as mentioned many times, have killed them. Only three losses in those 19 games. So Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Air Force fouled, and Cole hangs on just to get blasted. Here comes the late flag, though. It's going to be another penalty, a face mask, probably. Taylor Casey, Adrian Owasom, green shirts flying all over this football field, but making one mistake after another, allowing Memphis to keep drives alive. Big face mask, too. It's a nice job now. Take a look at it, but uh, it's a nice job of Adrian Watson pulling off his pass rush. He's just diving to reach the guy. Now, if he feels you got the mask, you got to go ahead and let it go. Being in that situation, a lot of times you don't feel like you have the mask. It happens so fast. The only time you feel like you have a mask, a piece of your fingers hanging off, then you knew you got a cop. Well, I played for a guy named Don Shula, and he preached to us every year we could be the most physical team in the league and the least penalized. And he didn't leave us any choice, and that's exactly what we did. You don't have to have these kinds of penalties and keep killing yourself. Heaven knows what the score would be in the second half had North Texas not made so many penalty mistakes. Load up that backfield again, give it to Cole. Going old school on first down from 21, which they've done a few times. It's like Woody Hayes there. Yeah, that's in Woody Hayes' old goal line formation. Big Pete Johnson goal line. He ran, well, he ran it all the time. Goal too, line to know. goal line. That's the only formation they had was a full house. Yeah. Bob Ferguson was a fullback. But you weren't born then. Another well, the penalty. I'll just go back to the penalties one more time. That's 5 for 58 yards. It seems an overwhelming amount, but it's a key times and key places in the game where they happen. Big run this time, and Cole is down to the 5-yard line, and it's first and goal. Tigers, a 14-yard burst. Great job up front by Gene Frederick. Jason Matthews, Jeremy Rohn, the big guys up front in the white shirts. The O-line sticking on blocks for a change. So the Tigers poised to accept these North Texas gifts. Cole. 
Chris able to back his way back to the line. Losing his hat in the process. Now, the Tigers this year have not been a good team in these red zone situations. That's not a good ratio at all of touchdowns to opportunities, especially with six turnovers, it looks even worse. The two plus now, the opportunity of them pounding it up in there with, with the loss of the top two running backs. And Cole's done a great job tonight. Still, he's not, there's a reason why he's not to start. Confusion on the Memphis sideline. Coach West grabbing people to keep him from running on the field and not a happy camper. They're down to the last timeout, but they have a chance to open back up a two touchdown lead. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of the 2003 New Orleans Bowl. Brought to you by New Orleans. Discover all that New Orleans has to offer at NewOrleansOnline.com. New Orleans, happening every day. And by the next Ford F-150, built Ford Tough. When mascots collide. Next on Jerry Springer. You got pad level. You got good pad level on Eagle. Second and goal from the five after a timeout. Four straight three and outs until they get this drive extended. And right up through the middle of the end zone goes LaKenda Cole. The big guys of the white shirt just put the big guys in the green shirt on that drive. Knocked them back, hooked them, took it in the end zone. Old-fashioned way. No hesitation by Coles either now. No. I saw a little daylight smoked it up in there. Nice. Oh, he's run hard all night. Extra point by Goskowski. And the North Texas penalties put them back down 14 points as Memphis cashes it in. Their third team running back, sophomore from Memphis, Lakendis Cole. Scoring for the first time. Long faces again now on the mean green side as they celebrate on the other side of the Superdome. Memphis went right at Brandon Kennedy and got a touchdown by LaCandace Cole to make it 24-10. 9.08 to go. And uh, the Tigers, who thought they had total control of this thing, now do again. Um, said Saddam was caught and I graduated. Miracles happened. <laughs> Patrick Byrne, also a backup quarterback, handles the kickoff and has done a superb job tonight. Mel Branch bringing this one out. Four yards deep. When they did that in the first half, they fumbled at their own eight. This time they get only to their own 14 yard line. And how do you score against a dominating nose, nose man? A nose man is dangerous if he penetrates in the A-gap next to the center. That's not what Brandon Kennedy does. He jumps way out here, which leaves his linebacker on an island. Yeah, when you're down at the five-yard line, you cannot jump two gaps. Like Coach said, he's going to come over here in a B-gap. It's going to put Chris Hurd on an island one-on-one, -on -one, which gives a tailback a two-way go. See, Chris Hurd doesn't have a chance. He can stick him up all you want, but he's got a two-way go. It's no shot where Brandon Kennedy is his best football player, not when he's jumping around, but when he's penetrating up the field. Not around the field, up the field. That's when he dominates. Take the branch in motion. Hall looks up. Blunt hangs on to this one. And down to the 41. Blunt wide open in the first half. Underthrown by a good five yards. This one goes 45 yards. It's a good play call by Ramon Flanagan because they took Quinn. They ran him out, ran the defensive corner out of the play. They brought Blunt all the way from the backside over there. You see Blunt lined up there. He's going to run all the way across the field. Scotty Hall just puts it where he can catch the ball right in the basket because the corner vacated the area because of Quinn running him out of the area. Nice play call, good route, the great throw by Scotty Hall. They go to Blunt, they get results. A touchdown by every four catches. The junior from Bandera, Texas. Ball seeming to settle down, not overthrowing everybody. Reverse, Joel Inwigwe back to Hall. 
avoids Coop Carey, and overthrows in Wigway, who started that whole circus. If they would have had it, they had Johnny Quinn right in the end zone, wide open. And not for the first time tonight. Primary receiver was Johnny Quinn. He's wide open. The problem was that Scott Hall did not have time to deliver the football. At this very moment, when Quinn's breaking open, Hall had a rusher in his face, and he had to avoid him. Coop Terry, number 37, was right up in Hall's face, and he could not get the ball thrown on a play that would have otherwise worked. Well, that is at least four touchdowns that might have been for North Texas. Cobbs with one tackle, and then Scott Vogel wrestles him down, or does he? Wow. Took some help from Harper. But there, you've, seen plays, yeah, you've seen plays this year, most notably South Carolina and Ole Miss, when you think you've got a, a good back tackle and you roll him over your body and he doesn't ever touch the ground and you think the play's over and he gets up and runs for a touchdown. That's exactly what this guy, Cobbs, is capable of. So that was, that was a good idea to keep on tackling him until you got him down. Midway in the fourth, four down territory without question. Third and eight here. They've gotten only two out of 11 third downs. Ball again well protected. Branch inside the five. He's down at the two. The great throw by Scotty Hall. I'll tell you that right now. And a great job with Jamel Brantz getting beat up like a ping pong ball inside between two guys. And Scotty Hall delivered the ball to a spot. Outstanding call. The great news for Scott Hall with the fact that his big guys up front did a beautiful job of pass protection. It was perfect pocket protection. Very difficult to do against the Joe Lee Dunn defense. But nonetheless, it was done. You're seeing the heart of a champion in North Texas right yes, here. Yes, you are. How could he? 37 yards, first and goal from the King. Who else but Patrick Cobbs to get the touchdown, his second of the night. And he wanted no doubt that he was in that end zone. He kept those legs pumping until he was four yards deep. What an answer. Champions answer points, Chris. And, and, and a good call by Coach Dickey and Ramon Flanagan. Why? Because they came back to the counter game, which Memphis has not stopped yet. It's the counter OF. It's a lead block by the fullback. You're having your, your backside guard come around and lead the little power man up inside for six points. And another chance to get within seven. Basil Dua is 43 out of 44 for the year, and it's 24-17. Well, it took him only a minute 55 to go 86 yards on five plays. Cobbs finished it, but the key's two strikes deep by Hall. It wasn't the counter OF, it was the power O. And that's when you have a lead back. Watch it. And right here's the lead back. The fullback will kick out. There's the guard leading up into the hole. And Cobbs showing some power. Showing Great leverage. power. And what North Texas must do right now, number one, eliminate the stupid penalties that have kept them from at least being tied here and maybe having a touchdown lead. And number two, they got to execute on defense. They've, now, they've been playing defense now. They've been doing some snot bubbles, uh, man. Yeah, but not the last drive. They got knocked in the yeah, back yeah, of the they, end zone. They, they got their snot bubbles in the, on defense. The last, you're right. On the score, Cobbs behind the senior. Starting his 48th game. Grand Prairie, Texas. Three-time first team all Sun Belt Conference. Nick Zuniga. And Joe Lee Dunn has yeah, a very clear message for his guy. Rush the passer. You let that guy stand there. He's on rhythm now. There it is. Rush the passer, please. Pass <laughs> rush, man. I would really appreciate it. Or work for that spot. Bring an eight of y'all. Somebody got to get there. I'm not sure about this reasoning here. Just let him start at the 31-yard line. He might have missed hit that because uh, you're right. I, why do that? Yeah, but, return anything all night. I see the coach going over there asking, what are you doing? So he's going to, when the coach comes down and talks to the kicker, you know you had a, a miscommunication on well, what you want done. When the kicker comes off about 40 <laughs> yards from the coach and gets behind the lineman, you know there's a reason for that. I, I don't know, coach. I don't, I, just, I don't know what I was thinking about. So Memphis from their 32. 
Full house again. And Cole to not quite the 35. Give me the couple. That play will allow me to show you what I meant on the touchdown play. This time, this time, Brandon Kennedy hits the A gap, penetrates, gets a piece of the back, exactly. and it completely screws up the play. Got to play. This time, somebody got him on the sideline. His defensive coordinator, Kenny Evans, or somebody, and said, son, hit the A-gap, not the B. Memphis without starting receiver Chris Kelly now with a right knee injury out for the game. This is a first down, tight end John Doucette for 10 yards. That's, that's a big tight end now. That's 270 pounds, and he's matched up with Chris Hurd, the linebacker. And what he does is he gets Chris Hurd on his hip. And Doucette did a nice job of accelerating out of the cut for 270 and making hands. Now, if I'm Doucette, I want to go ahead and face that big man up. I don't want him to have a leeway like that and use his big body to shield me from the ball. And Danny went right to him. First option, first read, bam, through the strike. 242 yards now for Wim Prime. 16 to 22 has not thrown a pick. He had four in the last regular season game, the loss to South Florida. And around Avery, four me and all, he gets six out of this. Good yardage on first down, hit by Craig Jones. And I was not in time, Bill, inside six minutes now. I was not a proponent of all these bowl games. When I first saw we were going to have so many bowl games, like a lot of people, I thought, well, what's the use? Well, here it is, folks. This is wonderful. These guys are playing a great football game in front of a great crowd in a community that appreciates it, and it justifies all of the bowl game thinking in my mind. I to tell schools that waited 32 and 42 years. Too many bowls. On the keeper, first down yardage. Wimpry to the 42 of the Mean Green. Thursday night, more bowl action here on ESPN2. The GMAC Bowl from Mobile, Alabama, 7.30 Eastern. Ben Roethlisberger and Mac champion Miami of Ohio against the Louisville Cardinals. And their quarterback, Stephon LaForce. Nice little matchup with Stephon LaForce. Now I had a chance to do Louisville. He's a dangerous football player. And Louisville's got a great offense. In fact, the number one offense in conference, USA. Good, good inter USA and, and Mac. That's a nice little matchup. I love mm -hmm. that. Tigers doing what they need on this drive. Couple first downs, eating time inside five minutes now. Cole just inside the 40. We had a heck of an experience at the uh, GMAC Bowl a year ago. Byron Lethwich's last game, John L. Smith's last game at Louisville. There was a lot of drama that night yeah, yeah. for a whole lot of reasons. Uh, cell phone was made Probably popular that night, wasn't it? Cell phone was yeah. big time. Joe Horn would have been yeah, so proud yeah. of him. <laughs> Pets is really needing to force a third and long here. Draw play, he'll do it. No gain for Cole. Again with Booger. Penetrating Booger. Yeah, that, that phone call you're talking about, very expensive, as it turned out once the fine was uh, handed down today for Joe Horn, hiding the cell phone inside that goalpost pad. Can you hear me now for 30 grand? Yeah. Indeed. Chris, if you had been in uniform that night, what would you have done with Joe Horn? I would have, I would have grabbed him and smashed the cell phone. I would have George T. did him, which George T. did to Terrell Owens on the star. You can't do that to those guys. And I'm disappointed the Giants didn't step up. Third and eight, caught Fletcher, first down, and the Tigers keep rolling on maybe a game-clinching drive, 12 yards. It's a great read by Danny Wimprine, understanding the weakness of the defense, seeing the corner playing off. You run a five-yard hitch, all you got to do is fall forward for three. You got the first down. But look at the read right away, no hesitation, and bam, on target. Pratchett doesn't have to work for the ball. He catches the ball and immediately goes from the catch to the run transition in a heartbeat. Nice. First game of the bowl season has been a good one. Inside three and a half minutes into the Williams Bowl. Won by North Texas last year. They trailed by as many as 14 tonight. Desperately trying to get the ball back here as Cole meets Kennedy. And Evan Cardwell head on. North Texas, two timeouts remaining. Memphis has only one, and the next snap will happen with less than three minutes to go. Nice adjustment by Kenny Evans and the defensive staff of the Mean Green 
with their star player. Brandon Kennedy is playing good football now. He's either stuffing the center straight back or he's taking the A-gap on either side, and he's really unblockable. That one for no gain. Two tight ends. One tight end. Baby Parton in motion. Out of the eye. Cole. Two to 25. Third and seven coming. And North Texas will use that next to last time out here with 2.36 to go. Coming right at Booker Kennedy. With the mixed results tonight. Only result that matters right now is Memphis leading by seven late. Always action on Bourbon Street. Well, even this week for the New Orleans Bowl, there will be in a couple of weeks for the Nokia Sugar Bowl to decide the BCS championship. Right back here in the Superdome. That's what they're playing for tonight. And Memphis is looking at a third and seven with 2.36 to go. They're just for North Texas use its next to last time out. And if they get this first down, it is awfully hard even for the most optimistic of the Mean Green to figure how they're going to pull out a miracle here. Keeping it on the ground with Cole sweeping, no gain. And the last time out here was 2.29 on the clock. And a big time play by Taylor Casey, number four. And these linebackers have been all over the field as we have been led to believe that they would be. We got Hurd, Spencer, and Casey for eight tackles eight tackles and five tackles respectively Taylor Casey does Taylor yeah. Casey yep does, does a nice job he, and I'll tell you what if you're a linebacker you got a little wide receiver on you better defeat the block and make the tackle or you need a new can of linebackers <laughs> becoming a can and some what, of us do in what <laughs> position did you play Chris well, I can of linebacker but then you get a wide receiver that can handle you then you're in trouble that was a nice job of using his hands and it looked like White to me didn't want any part of that contact now. He came a little shy. Don't be shy. 42-yard field goal coming, coming Thursday night. ESPN with the exclusive announcement of the 2004 NFL Pro Bowl starters. Special edition of the NFL Live Pro Bowl Selection Show presented by Sears, 7 Eastern Thursday on ESPN. i got to tell my Joe Green Pro Bowl story. Joe Green was supposedly such a nice guy off the field and he beat you to death on Sunday afternoon so when we went to the Pro Bowl I told Carolyn we're gonna go to this luncheon I want you to sit with that guy over there she went and sat and had lunch with Joe Green the rest of my career every time we played the Steelers Joe would come out and say oh how's Carolyn how's she doing he never kicked me he didn't no. hurt me he didn't break my neck or anything yep, you over merit coach you over merit it worked I still couldn't block him though <laughs> Kowski's longest has been 45. This one for a 10-point lead, 42. And he has got it nailed. I'll tell you, that's a great job of kicking and being a pitcher. He threw one right down the middle. He did it with that right leg, though. That was a nice, good execution of the mechanics of the field goal. Good snap, good hold, and he drilled it. You know who the special teams coach is. Depends now if they're playing well. <laughs> yeah, well, Tommy's still looking at his watch to see if that thing got off in 1.2. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's got a pretty good feel. Kickers do usually after they leave their foot, they'll get a, get an idea. Yeah, he knows that's good. That's a strike. He threw the fastball in there. I asked him how his elbow said. He said his elbow's fine. He's getting ready for that pitching season. A good kick, good solid kick under pressure. It really was, and uh, it makes North Texas' job extremely difficult. Now they need two scores. It's uh, difficult because they have not taken advantage of their chances, unlike Memphis. Not many blown opportunities tonight by the Tigers. This was early. Andy Blunt wide open. That's a touchdown if it's thrown correctly. Fumble brought it out from nine yards deep in the end zone. Devin Moore, and it's recovered by the Tigers at the eight. That cost him three. Face mask leading to a scoring drive by nice. Memphis. Third down play right there. Third down penalty. Well, I, at least four would-be touchdowns, either overthrown or top slipping or yeah. something going awry for North Texas. 
And and Memphis, every ch every chance they have had to get on the scoreboard, they've gotten points. Well, except when they, they, they had a field goal that bounced off the upright. That was the only one. And they self-destructed with penalties down close early in the third. Don't think it out. Well, the Moore has learned his lesson. So 10 down, no timeouts, 2.26 to go for a non-passing offense. Although, on that last drive, Scott Hall hit the two out of four for 82 yards. NBA Fast Break Tuesday coming up next. We'll have more on this New Orleans Bowl if you want to switch over to ESPN News. And Danny Wimper not only has the mental characteristics of Brett Favre, but also a little bit of the physical yeah, character. Looks like yeah, it looks like it. And that's a compliment. Brett Favre, one of my favorite players, had the privilege of coaching him in the East-West Shrine game. We knew then he'd be a star. You didn't coach him up too much, did you? We didn't say nothing to him. <laughs> just gave him the ball. Ball swarmed. Struggles to get within two yards of the line of scrimmage. But that was a double eagle of what's called a Bears defense, popularized by Buddy Ryan when he was the coordinator for the Bears. Both guards and the center covered. Very difficult because everybody across the front in the middle three, one-on-one -on -one protection. And after him again, he gets blitz, and blitz goes nowhere. Blitz Real coverage. Ballard. Yep, blitz coverage, man-to-man. -man. The theory is that you're not going to have time to set up and throw it deep. You're going to have to dump it off in hot fashion like that, and Ballard, Johnny on the spot. It was a great form tackle by yes, Derek was. Ballard. It was something you don't see a lot in college football it today. It looked like a Chris Spielman yeah. special. I don't know, but he brought it, he kept his head up and he brought his feet. And he one stepped and wrapped, two steps to squeeze, and closed the gate in front of the ball. He brought a little nasty with it. Patrick Cobbs being helped off the field. The worst of all possible signs here, even though they need to pass, but still figure in. And headed toward the bench. Third down and ten. Coming after Hall again. Jamel Bridge. And he was face masked. Still gets the first down to the 37-yard line. And they'll tack on some extra to the 17-yard gain as they continue to check on uh, Cobbs. Team doctor Robert Gershon looking Patrick over. Again, a point that Coach made, and we both notice was that there's no quit in either of these football teams and it's a little grabbing of the face mask defense five yards will be tacked on the end of the run first down you know texas is still alive and chris uh, you just continue with what you were saying there because these are two gritty outfits yeah and, and the, to me it's a reflection of the coaches yep and if the coaches uh or this is a reward for these kids or North Texas winning the Sun Belt Conference. Tommy West, first bowl game in 32 years for Memphis. They're playing like it, and it's fun to watch. Ball can't get it off. Coots. Yep, it's double eagle. We don't have time to do replays because there's no huddle, but it's a Bears defense covering both guards, all man coverage with a free safety, and he just doesn't have anybody in time to deliver. Yeah, I'm sorry, Dave. I had to say coot. I can't. Couldn't help it. <laughs> I'll be my guest. <laughs> Memphis to get back into the postseason with such a young roster, just eight seniors. This flag to stop the clock at a minute four. Run to the snap. Full start. Offense, five-yard penalty. Remain second down. Now, Heather, when you go from three wins last year to nine and four, if they hang on to this, that's got to pay off for Tommy West. Well, I, I think it'll definitely make an impact because I spoke with Memphis Athletic Director R.C. Johnson yesterday. His goal was to announce a contract extension before tonight's game, but travel commitments didn't allow them to finalize the details. What has been confirmed is the length of the contract. It will extend to 2008. What they need to iron out is the money, of course, and I certainly think this will help get the budget up a little bit. Both parties hope the contract will be finalized by the first of the year. And he's really enjoyed himself in Memphis. He, he knows what it's like to win seven, get to a bowl, and get fired at Clemson. So offside defense contact foul, five yard penalty, still second down. Nice to be appreciated. And Tommy West is very appreciated at Memphis. And our Capital One players of the game, 
pretty obvious. Danny Wimprime for the Tigers throws for 254. There's one on the ground through the hands of Ben Wigway here. And Patrick Cobbs with both North Texas touchdowns at 110 yards. That's still 47 below his average. But uh, when Scott Hall could get absolutely nothing going, Cobbs finally uh, breaks a couple in the second half and uh, gets North Texas back into the game. You know, if, uh, if I had to pick a guy, too, uh, if we pick a defensive guy, I think Eric Taylor from Memphis has just been outstanding, both against the run and the pass playing with high energy and a high motor. Third and 12, and then they tee off. All with time, this time it overthrows Branch. And last gasp time with 37 seconds. And the guy that was constantly in Memphis's backfield was Michael Pruitt, number 93 for the Mean Green. Right. Had a wonderful game. Even better than his more famous teammates. With the effort of both teams has just been outstanding and these guys do feel like it's their national championship coach and it's just been a joy to watch and, and the excitement of the people from North Texas and the fans from Memphis. It's college football which is to me a celebration. It's changed my whole perspective on the bowl thing. Fourth and 12 for Hall and the guy is hit as he tries to get rid of it. That will do it. A coup. Coup with a little speed rush off the corner there. Again, Joe Lee using one of his linebackers, putting him as a defensive end. It's off to the races. It's a race to the quarterback. Z ball, get ball. Too many balls, not when you look at that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's awesome. What a great, I think, mean, Coach, you've been in that position. That's got to be just a, an awesome feeling. It is. It's, it's, you've got stuff slamming all down in your britches. <laughs> it's freezing cold, and you're thinking, good gosh, I've got to get out of this cloak. That's mainly what you're thinking. Just the, the no, you're also yeah. proud of the guys, and you, you do. It's a great moment. You don't think about anything except all those months together with the uh, hardworking youngsters. Danny Wimprime, the New Orleans Bowl MVP. Memphis, after a 32-year postseason absence. And after a three-win 2002 season. Goes 9-4. The 2003 New Orleans Bowl. And in so doing, they end the North Texas win streak at eight. Champions last year, the Mean Green Fall 27 to 17. Six years at Clemson, he took those Tigers to four bowls. These Tigers. Probably feel like they just won the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Well, they had to beat a very hard-fighting, well-prepared North Texas team. A team that comes from a conference that's not as much recognized, but one that can be proud of their representative tonight. Uh, and don't underestimate what this can do for his recruiting, too, now. Look at that. That's the first. You haven't had that in a while. It's great to see from Memphis. Heather is with the MVP tonight, Danny Wimprod. Danny, congratulations on a great game. The last time Memphis was in a bowl game was before you were born. Do you understand what this means for this program? It's been a long time, a long time coming. These guys have worked really hard. Finally started to play as a team this year. It's a great feeling. I feel so great for this entire program. What does it mean to you to do this in front of more than 100 friends and family in your hometown? I mean, it's huge. I love this city. Everybody from Memphis came down to support us. Huge game, great feeling. It's ready. Time to go have fun. Now tell me, you came into this game without your top running back. You lost your second running back. Was there ever any doubt you guys could get this done? No, no doubt. That's what the team's all about. And we showed that. We finally started to play as a team this year. And these guys showed a lot of heart, and I'm so proud of them. You won four state high school tournament uh, games here. Are you well aware of what your record is here in this dome? I think about nine. 92 now, something like that. Feels really good. I'm proud of all these guys. Congratulations, Danny, on a great game. Coach, yeah. wonderful performance. 
I just asked Danny about what this means historically for this program. You've got to have a broader perspective on it. What does it mean for you? Well, what it means is that we came down here without our back, then we got our other back hurt, and these kids oh. found a way. So, you know, we got a character, a bunch of young people. We're proud of them. But this program is fixing to take off. I don't mind saying that. I mean, I think we've really just scratched the surface. It's been a long time since you've had a Gatorade bath. Feeling pretty good down here? Yeah, I like it. <laughs> You've been at Clemson. You've been in some big-time bowl games. Where does this win rank for you? Uh, as good as any of them. It really does, because it, especially with all the things that happen, uh, getting the people hurt. Danny was banged up in the game in the second half. Uh, so, I mean, it's as good as it gets. Huge coaching change in the offseason with Joe Lee Dunn coming in as your defensive coordinator. The ability to stop the nation's best runner in Patrick Cobbs, what did your defense do? Well, Joe Lee's a great football coach. Uh, he, he's run his system. He's tremendous. I said he was the best signee that I had uh, <laughs> last year. And, boy, I'm glad he's on our side. Tommy West, enjoy the victory. Congratulations on a huge win for Memphis. Thank you. Thanks. Tommy West used to be an advocate of a playoff system, but he says coming to this bowl, this excitement that has spread throughout the town has changed his mind about a playoff. Well... I have never thought that a playoff made any sense because nobody's ever shown me a playoff system that benefits the players. I've always thought about the players since I was one of them for so much of my life. And when you consider that you would have to virtually dismantle and you really would lose credibility for these kinds of bowls if you had a playoff system, that's just another reason to keep what we got. As flawed as it is, we can tweak it and we can get it a little better, but this doesn't it doesn't get any better than this in the sport of football. Well, I'm a proponent of a playoff system, but I, I, without eliminating what we're seeing and witnessing tonight, just the excitement of, of Memphis football being back and, and Coach West coming out and making ra a rather bold statement saying this, this is, is going to have our program take off. He's, in fact, it's fixing to take off. And I think, if, I don't speak Southern, but does fixing mean it's ready to go? Yeah, you got it. Okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah, when you get real Southern, it becomes, we're fitting to go. All right. and, <laughs> And, and you come up with a playoff system that shows me where the players benefit, and I'll endorse it with you. Well, Conference USA fitting to get real busy in the postseason. <laughs> they got Louisville and the GMAC Thursday. TCU against Boise State. A great Plains Capital Fort Worth Bowl matchup. Houston, Hawaii, and Honolulu, Southern Miss, Utah in Memphis. Memphis wins this one, and they take that trophy back with them. 27-17 to is the final over Sun Belt champion North Texas. whole different perspective when you come from a program where just success isn't quite enough at Clemson. Maybe they've learned some things in this past couple of years' experience with Tommy Bowden to a program that is starved for success. And Tommy West has given him a taste of it. Probably a lot more to come. And plus the seniors, Dave, how that's a reward for them. And to stand up there with the podium with their coach has got to be the highlight of their career as seniors leaving the program. 84 season, first bowl since 1971. You put it all together, you brought your fellas down here, you played a terrific game. The fans are just wonderful, they followed you to New Orleans. Congratulations, and I want to present you the championship so again, trophy. Again, congratulations of the New bowl. to the Tigers. Winners coming up next year on the ESPN2. Kevin Frazier, Greg uh, Anthony, Tim like Legler say, with NBA Fast thing, Break Tuesday. There's two groups, there's three, there's three groups of people that this wouldn't have happened. Number one's our coaches. We got a great coaching staff. Number two is this great bunch of players right here. And number three is you. We love you. Thanks. Thank you, Coach.